the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy. You're invited. Come on in, folks. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. Shalom, shalom. Let's go. Yo, I've been living at the bottom with my hand on your heel. When I want strong enough to put my hand on your ear. And nobody knows me better than my nostrils. So when I say something, boy, best believe I prosper. Hurry, I go on, came and caught him off a girl. Hit that you like button, come on. I'm partying like a star. That money tree scared, cause he saw me with a star. Standing tall, trying to cut you down. Sorry, I'm in charge. You messing with the line, rat. This ain't no scary cat. Trying to catch me unexpected, baby, I'm expecting that. Bet you that you don't want to come down to my level. I'ma humble you. You want to run walk around with a shovel. You don't regard the poor, probably why they want to jack it. Hit the like the button, come on. Scraps probably want to crack around the earth for a work. You would think that this fool's fine. Now you're traveling the space to go and still a moonshine. But I'm going to bring you down. Shining for a while, giving up all the clouds. But I'm going to break it down. Ain't no stop to you I lost it all and I had to Bridge post got me walking like a madman. Never really wanna see your brother stand up. I'm posted up like a lampstand. I bring him down like a champ, man. By day pride, I see in they eyes that I'm the Hit the last like man. button, come on. Bring him down like the two twin towers. One up on introduce you to my two twin powers. Walking through the valley of the shadow with death. Worse than the me's my enemy, so I be mad at myself. Y'all make me oh, this. We got a broadcast day. That nobody they gon' stop me, y'all disable this fate. The queen of Babylon don't wanna play with this. A king Kong ready for what you ain't gon' make an escape. Oh. Equipping and the clip, they just hate for just when I get revenge at the end, so you making a mistake. Trap tails, prepared and heavy, ready for that day. Checkmate anybody that wanna step in my way, cuz. Hit the like button, come on. Most times bringing them down. That's right, brothers and sisters. The Most High is going to bring you, bring them down, and He's not going to stop until they're underground. That's right, and that's including their God, the Devil, the Principality of the Power of the Air. The prince of darkness, Satan himself, running scared. Why? Because the children of Israel is back. Hit the like button. I'm Elder Ricard Shaw, the Gathering of Christ Church. We're going to jump right in. There's so much to unpack this evening. In the midst of many rumbles going on throughout the earth. Literal and, and literally and figuratively. Many rumbles happening within the earth right now. Uh, the Bible stated that at the very end, there will be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And here we are. Here we are born in a war. Let me find out where my phone is so that I can. I, so that thing won't be uh, bothering me throughout this whole broadcast. One moment. One moment. 
is a lot of pride. One second, let me, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Okay. Yeah, right now uh, we, go, we have a green screen behind us, so I know it don't look that good because soon we're going to be, wanna, we're going to be doing green screen productions, right, with great ba backgrounds and others behind us. So let me uh, fade this out a little bit so you can – is that a little better? I think that's better. That's a little better. All right. All right. All right, again, I'm Elder Rikosh Yar of the Gathered of Christ Church. There's so many things going on, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And this particular broadcast has been well overdue, okay? Before I talk about the broadcast, let me just tell you, the Academy was great last week. That's right, we went into the four empires, the four kingdoms of Daniel, Showing that we're in the last kingdom, and guess what? We're this close. We're this close to what? This empire falling. Rome in particular. America is, is, America is an extension of Rome. Only for the kingdom to come, which is Christ's kingdom, that will replace this one. All praises be to the Most High. That's why the devil is what? He's throwing everything at the wall at us, hoping something will stick. All right. This coming week, we have a roundtable discussion. Hebrew and Bible Academy roundtable discussion, the battle between man and woman. What happened? How did we grow so far apart? In particular, the children of Israel. OK, even though uh, I believe that that particular illness, that sickness of division have has affected all races of people where women believe they're their own uh, 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 their own as a group separate from men and vice versa. And I'm hoping that we can come to a mutual dialogue with the Bible open. And uh, we do have a special guest that will come on in the academy this coming Sunday. Uh, he understand this is a Bible. This is a Bible platform. Austin Hollerman. Uh, the brother that have traveled throughout the earth uh, under what you would call the passport bros. He's going to come in for about 30 minutes and talk about why he made a decision to begin to travel over the earth. Now, it's not going to be a thing where we can speak down on other people, but there's some sentiments going on amongst men who are fed up, and uh, we're going to hear his side of it. And if he could... If there was an option for him to find someone in Babylon, how would that look? What would need to happen wholesale for what? Relationships to come back where there's no need to travel all over the world because Satan is everywhere. But uh, he has some valid points and we're going to hear what those points are. Uh, there will be no uh, bashing or finger pointing more so his own observations to why the passport bros have grown to where it is today and at the end of it the bible speaks okay at the end of it the bible speaks and uh i'm curious to understand how that dialogue would happen um, how, how, how it's going to turn out and we're going to have we're looking into a clubhouse where those on our um on uh, who are our loyal academites, academy goers who have been operating with us for a while. Single and married can come into the clubhouse and we're going to have, you know, cue cards and ask certain questions. And we're going to go through the history of uh, when our people uh, ruled and how we interacted with one another after the fall, what happened. Uh, we're even going to talk about the effects of Willie Lynch and how that, that has become a generational curse that we continue to cleave to as an excuse. Blaming others while we are perpetuating the wickedness or the programming of L Willie Lynch. Which means, if we understand that Willie Lynch uh, uh, attempted 
a, a psychological warfare that would have black and black men and black women go against each other. If we understand that now, why are we still perpetuating the programming? That and more. The divide between man and woman, very interesting dialogue. And we're going to have someone who's going to come with an outside perspective. Okay, I know some people might say, well, it's a Bible study. Here's someone who, who's in the world or whatever the case is. And uh, folks, you would be surprised how many people, even in the world, even in the entertainment business, who watch these programs, who chime in, going through certain struggles out there, but these broadcasts, these Bible studies be anchoring brothers and sisters. So just because someone isn't devout and isn't walking exactly the way we are as of now, it doesn't mean they won't in the future. You'll be surprised. This truth, not just here on this platform, but the Israelite awakening in of itself is having a serious impact on the world. So I'm not going to shun someone or not hear their voice strictly because they may not be fully within our walk as of yet. Who knows? Maybe that dialogue will begin what? A new chapter in the, man, in, in the young man's life. So that and more this coming Sunday. Building bridges, we're going to talk about, and guess what? There will be some uncomfortable conversation in it. Okay, but all in all, how are we ever going to overcome our ills and our disagreements if we don't go through the ugly parts? Okay, if we don't go through the struggle that leads to kingdom. So, yes, it's time we hear each other and stop becoming offended and understand that just because someone has an experience doesn't mean that they are attacking male or female. All right. So I hope you all We'll, we'll chime in and we're seeking to take some clips of that and put it on some of our platforms as 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 we go forward. OK, now jumping right in, jumping right in. OK, if you're interested in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, there's nothing like it. You must go to historytimes.org to unroll, enroll. Now, jumping right in and do we got a broadcast for you this evening, brothers and sisters, please hit that like button. A well overdue dialogue or conversation, and I hope you all can chime in, 515-605-9327 when the lines are open. Our broadcast lesson discussion this evening, when media is used as the devil's tongue. Now, why did I put it this way? Well, Christ told us in Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 at the very end, people who would be operating under a certain religion would hide behind whatever, whichever establish, establishment or empire that's in place to indirectly attack those who keep the commandments of God and follow Christ. They would find themselves in position, and even Revelations 2 and 9 and 2 and 10 says, 2, 2 9 and 10 says, that we are to understand those things that we shall suffer, endure those things that we shall suffer, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. They will work behind politics. They would work behind media. They would work behind propaganda to demonize and destroy those who believe in Christ and keep God's commandments. Okay? And then, he, then Christ said, St. John 8 and 44, ye are of your father, the devil. The lust of your father ye will do. You were what? You were a murderer in the beginning. And the truth is not in you. And this is why I want to talk about media today. Is it being used as the devil's tongue? I need you to understand that most governments of the earth, all governments, mind you, knows the pop, understand the, the power of propaganda. They understand the power of propaganda. Yes, they will pass things off with media, TV, uh, radio, uh, music and say, oh, that's just a movie. 
Oh, no, that's just a song. Oh, these are just actors. But why is it that the majority of all governments has what? A propaganda uh, apparatus within their administration. They understand the power of programming, psychology, and the impact it have more so on the poor compared to everyone else. Why does it have an impact on the poor and the devil's tongue is destroying the poor? Is because, think about it, if you don't have the financial power to actually live a life uh, where you can have outreach and travel to experience the world through what? Through finances, through upward mobility, the poor lives that's that's right. The poor lives uh, vicariously, vicariously through who they watch in the media. Because they're not able to experience certain experiences in the earth, not having the financial fortitude or or the wherewithal to travel and do certain things. That's right. They understand the poor experience life through the eyes of those they emulate or respect. The rich and famous. So I'm going to go into this today. Into this today. Because it's not as if they don't want our people and we are God's people. It's not as if they don't want us pushing, asserting agenda or pushing uh, a certain progressive political ideology. They don't mind us pushing something as long as it's against our what? Our moral foundation as God's people. And that leads us. We have a lot on the gambit today, folks. That leads us to what? We're going to talk about Neo today. We're going to talk about Jamie Foxx today. We're going to also talk, and I'm going to bring it all with the Bible. And we're going to talk about the hypocrisy of media. The hypocrisy of media. Let me show you something real quick. I'm going to show you that they are stoking a race war. Intentionally, through propaganda. I'll go no other place than what? How you doing, lawyer? Let me bring the lawyer in. Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom. Shalom to the family. Let me bring shalom. the lawyer in. Shalom, lawyer. All right. Let me go directly here to the browser. Right? As you can see, I'm going straight to the to the to the playbook. Right? The Holocaust Museum uh here in Philadelphia, not too far downtown Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, Neo the singer. We're going to talk about it today. There there's a place called the Holocaust Museum. I mean, this thing is something to behold. It's the museums of all museums. I wish that we could actually have something on par or even near, near the ingenuity, history, and the lavishness, lavishness right in the middle of Sin City that goes with this particular muse museum. I wish we as the children of Israel could have something like that, but no. I digress. I doubt if they would ever do anything to support our cause. And I'm speaking, of, I'm speaking of the world powers in general. No one in specific here. Right? But this is why I said, and this, let's go into it, that when media is used as the devil's tongue. When you go to the Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia, right? Right here. They harp on or stress the, the danger, 
that came with Nazi propaganda. Now, what was this? Nazi propaganda. Now, we were suffering our own trials and tribulations and sufferings in America while they were experiencing, us, the Europeans over in, in Germany were experiencing their Holocaust during the wars. Right? But I digress. But what they said was, never again. They understood that according to, uh, according to how it's outlined in the museum, that there were stages that led to what? A government feeling justified to single out a people only to destroy a people if you could first demonize the citizens of any country against one particular group. And they said that Hitler had this serious propaganda that led to what? Jewish people being what? Demonized. Therefore, there was no people who would sympathize with them after years of negative propaganda against them. Right? It says right here. Number one, and this is what they say, never again. They look back at World War I. They look back at World War II. And they say what? Never again. We will do everything in the spirit of self-preservation to make sure that media never has the power to demonize or have Jewish people viewed generally through media in a negative light. So they said, listen, they said the Nazis, Hitler in particular, was skilled in propagandists who used sophisticated advertising. Advertising techniques and the most current technology of the time to spread their message. That was one. Number two. Once in power, Adolf Hitler created a ministry of public enlightenment and propaganda to shape German public opinion and behavior. And behavior. Right? And of course, they would tell you outright, Hitler might as well have been the son of the devil. And that's why I highlighted this and, and named this when media is used as the devil's tongue. I'm not going to use my own opinion. I'm going to use what they has, have, have uh, 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 highlighted and outlined as what? As the steps that's taken from a, through a government to destroy a people. Ministry of Public Enlightenment and propaganda to shape German public opinion and behavior. Number three. Number three, hit this like button, folks. We're going to school today. Okay. I'm going to show you how all of this leans right back into prophecy. Because I would expect, if this happened to anyone, that the governments would get behind media to make sure it doesn't happen to us as a people. If you know the outcome would be that you can demonize the people to a point where, where no one would care that you would round them up and even kill these people, are we not worth preserving? Or have we been demonized to the point that no one even cares anymore? And was that all planned? Obviously, obviously someone had the playbook. Is this playbook getting played out, elder lawyer? right here in America. See? Number three. Let's go. Nazi propaganda played an integral role in advancing the persecution and ultimately 
and ultimately the destruction of Europe's Jews. So don't tell me that the media using movies, uh, using circulations, magazines, newspapers, don't tell me that there isn't power, negative power, that can be utilized to destroy one's enemy. Don't tell me that doesn't exist in media. If you're telling us that the third step that you'll make sure that will, will never happen again is that Nazi propaganda played an integral role in advancing the persecution and ultimately the destruction of Europe's Jews. It incited hatred. It incited hatred and fostered a climate of indifference. Now, that's a, that's a good word there. To their fate. Indifference. Aligning people within a country against a specific group to, in which what? People become indifferent with one another and don't care what happens to the group that has been marginalized or not just marginalized, but demonized. So therefore, it justifies the public destroying a particular group. Now, I love to use, uh, uh, I love, brothers and sisters, to use the media on these broadcasts as a perfect, what you would call, uh, uh, I would say, a point to teach from. Right. What goes on in the media, it's relatable. Right. What happened with uh, uh, um, Kanye West, Kyrie Irvin, what happened, what continued to happen with our brother Ice Cube. It's all relatable. And it's prophetic. So I like to use these so that our generation, this younger generation, this new generation can understand that's right, how close we are as a people to actually getting Holocaust, utterly destroyed. If we play in to what? The stereotypes and the negative liberal progression that they have now aligned our people with, it justify others attacking us, destroying us, getting rid of us especially if there's a negative betrayal, portrayal, excuse me, throughout the earth. Some people don't know anything about us outside of the media's portrayal of us here. And they'll treat us accordingly. They'll treat us like we are portrayed through media, through video. And some of us can claim, well, it's unfair. It's not right. They should... They should get to know someone personally. That's their problem. It's not our problem that they don't, that they would judge according to media. You are naive if you're thinking that way. You are naive. There's a reason why Jewish people get in front of anything that would cast a negative light on them, even if it's small, and label it anti-Semitism. Because they know the power. That's right. They understand the power that comes or I would say the threat that comes to their people if they allow negative sentiments against them to fester within society. They just experienced it not too long ago. So some people might ask, well, why is it that every little thing that happens, they jump in front of it? Well, it's the power of propaganda. No matter how small they get in front of it. This is why China, when they made an alignment with the Western world, America in particular, there was an agreement between Americans, the American government and the Chinese propaganda machine that they had to promote on on our programs in the Western world. A certain percentages of Asians being shown on commercials, TV and movies. That's right. There's a quota on if you got a movie or something, there, there have to be an Asian in it. And you must 
you must portray them in a positive light. Now, what is that to say about us? If we are allowed with no pushback, if we allow as a people them to portray us negative throughout the earth, it won't be too long before what? We're destroyed. It's the image. It's the image. And I'm going to talk about that today because they don't mind us pushing a certain image. As long as, uh, as, long as it fits their narrative, I'm speaking of the media, the media that will allow the world to see us anything other than God's people. They don't mind. That's right. They don't mind if we take our son with our celebrity, a, a, a boy that was born a biological son, and put a dress on them and say, this is my daughter now. They'll celebrate it, highlight it. They'll celebrate it. They'll put you on magazines. They'll give you television shows because it fits into the narrative. We don't understand how we're being viewed from what? A propagandized lens, lens of how the world is viewing us. Because what they're saying is, if we don't get in front of this with these crazy people, these people are going to influence our children. They have the power of influence. Through hip hop, we have Chinese people rapping. Okay? We have, we, listen, we, we, we have Arabs coming over here in the hip hop game, becoming DJs. DJ Khaled. See, so they understand our influence. And if we allow our image to continually get portrayed negative throughout the earth, it becomes a threat to the societies of the world. And they'll say, you see that first they had our people doing hip hop. Then they started having our people. I mean, look at our women going over there being turned out. And now if we don't get in front of this. They, they, these same people. Who are the poster child for, for the liberal movement being black men raising a black boy and saying it's OK to put a dress on him. It won't be too long before it influence our children. We must wage war against these people. And that leads us to Neo fair use. Now. Now. If Neo was progressive, if Neo had a son who spoke to him and said, Dad, I would like to become a girl, which is not, it's against the Bible. We're Bible people here. He would be celebrated. Neo would be celebrated. But Neo has an opinion. Elder Lawyer, I want you to also, when you get a chance, I need you to go to the Apocrypha and let's get out uh, in Maccabees where the, the Greeks under Antiochus began to uh, sever from amongst our people wicked men who would sell us out to the government. Yes, sir. And that falls into the athletic part, the athletes. Thank you, whoever just sent us a cash app. I really appreciate that. Bless you. Right? Let's go there real quick. And I want you to hold that. But if he was portraying something that fit the narrative of demonizing the children of Israel, because that's who Neo is, he would be celebrated. But because he wants to protect his child, his children, He's getting ostracized because it doesn't fit the image they would like to what? Portray for our people. Because the image that Neo is talking about is what? Is an image that I'm going to tell you right now. An image of him loving his children. Folks, that crosses over race lines. He want for his family what any race or any man 
of any race would want for his family. So they don't need that image portrayed through Neo. It's a conflict that comes through what? The business. The business is pushing a certain agenda. Neo would, would garner sympathy and they would know that we all as God's people aren't what they're portraying through the media. If this gets out that 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 Neo loves his son as a son. Fair use, fair use for educational use only. Please hit the like button. Now, someone tell me what the Neo say wrong here. Right. Let's get it here. One second. What did Neo say wrong? Huh? Let's get it. One second. Let me pull it up here. Okay, here it is. Fair use. I have no issue with with the LBG. I have no problem with none with nobody. Okay, right. love who you love, do what you do. Exactly. I just personally come from an era where. A man was a man and a woman was a woman and it wasn't but two genders and that's just how I rocked. Me now, too. It, 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 you, could, you could identify as a goldfish if you feel like Right. I, don't <laughs> I agree. Care. That ain't my business. It, just, it becomes my business when you try to make me play the game with you. I'm not going right. to call you a goldfish, but exactly. you, you want to be a goldfish, you go be a goldfish. It's all Amen. Good. I mean, now, don't worry about it, brothers and sisters, for the sake of uh, the rules here on YouTube when it comes to content, I have to keep it frozen, okay? But... You're going to still hear the content, all right? Have to keep it frozen. He says he's not against someone even identifying as a goldfish, but, but if that's, that's your problem, that's your family. You go on with that. And don't forget, when they push an agenda, it affects the poor more so than any other people. Why? Because we, not having the experience, wherewithal and finances to experience the world, we live vicariously through the entertainers. That's right. why it affects us more negative than any other people. Because, because we have a lack of experience, we must use our imagination and live through these people. So it's important that these people become proper, what they would call role models. Or, or, or it will affect our society, our community, like they have intended. Look at it now. So he says you can identify as a goldfish if you would like, right? Let's go. Fair use. Yeah, it's, it's just, we live in a weird time, man. We, we do. do. We, we do. live in a time where a person will have a mental breakdown in front of their camera. Right. Wait, let me let me white balance it. <laughs> That's right. crazy, right? What the hell is that? Like, if you, if you are of sound mind enough to find the light. Right. <laughs> And exactly. Then break exactly. Down. Exactly. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Right. Man. No, there is something wrong Whatever. with you. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> right. There ain't nothing wrong with you. Like, man. Right, just, right. You're know. you're adding to it. It's all how we deal with life. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And they a lot of the people want pity, self-pity. I uh and I don't it. like that. That was one thing that was not allowed in the house that mm. I grew up in. It's like, okay, uh, get your cry out, you know, right. give that its moment. But once it's done. Keep moving. That's right. We're not going to sit and dwell in sorrow. We're not no. going to sit and dwell in anger. We're going to give those emotions the moment that they deserve. The, we're going to respect those emotions. But then, Thank you, Neo. We're not going to live as perpetual victims for the rest of our lives. Right? Men man up. Right? Right. Men man up. And, you know, the real... The, the, let me tell you, the sisters who have their heads together... And there's many that, that are not portrayed or showed at all through media. They just show the worst of our men and women through media. 
And sisters will tell sisters right now, listen, nah, ain't no time for crying. Women tell women, put your big girl panties on, right? And that's what Neil, this is how we used to talk, you know, at the barbecue. Sitting around the table. Who want a guy boo-hoo and, and all, every time you see him, he's always talking about his issues. No, nah, man mm -hmm. up. So what Neo is speaking to, how the media has portrayed us to be perpetual victims. Okay? Folks, that's a defeated mentality. And I'm glad he's saying this. Is Neo perfect? No. But we can learn from the world, can give some insight, can do what? This can be a teaching moment for everyone to say that, guess what? All of our people haven't sold out. And some of us realize that what? They must speak out because at the end of the day, they're going to be destroyed whether they speak out or not. And I'm going to Jamie Foxx in a minute. A lot of them are saying, listen, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out speaking truth. Because if I play the game, they're only going to destroy me later without me having a say. They're going to dictate. They're going to tell everyone. They're going to shape me in a negative light where there's no merit, where I have no voice to warn my people. So a lot of these entertainers, and I'm going to tell y'all out there, and I know y'all watch the broadcast. Guess what? If you, if you have something to say, you better get it out before they demonize you. Before they quiet your voice through demoni demonization. And I'm glad, Neil, right. who isn't perfect, right? He, he, he gave his own views. He gave his own views on how his family should be. Why? Because if he's a part of the cabal or part of the media, a silent part of the media through, through entertainment, the world will believe he think the same way as the satanic progressive liberals think so he's separating himself fair use we're gonna get up and continue moving because it's not about the fall you can fall a million times mm -hmm. you get up a million and one that's that's the way i was raised me too yeah like all right that hurt Go ahead, cry. Now they me. pamper, they, oh my God, and trigger go warnings. To the what the right. hell is a trigger warning? <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I, it's just, when, I it just is don't know weird when times. the world became so sensitive. Like, like comedians can't tell jokes no more. No. Like, everybody's offended. It's a joke. It's right. a comedian. <laughs> right. It's a joke. You're not supposed to take it serious. It's a joke. Right. His literal job is to joke about want, everyone. About everyone right. and everything. <laughs> And people want to get offended and like, don't say that. That's that's triggering. Oh my God. You know what? Yeah. Sit in your house by yourself. <laughs> exactly. It just it, it annoys me. It annoys I mean, me. anything can trigger you. A light can trigger you. A smell can trigger you. So I mean, we gotta walk on eggshells. Well, that's Listen, what they want us to. That's what they want us to do. But my generation, there were no trigger warnings. Okay, you 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 got up and you kept moving. That's right. that's kind of what it has to we be. We was kicked outside. We would come inside before the lights mm -hmm. go down. Exactly. If that. We got bu bumps and bruises. We just washed it off with the hose outside. Yeah, you was good. Come on, man. It was. Like, it's totally different. Times. We need to get back to them days. I feel like I feel like the the. I feel like parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, okay, Lost control. if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, and you just let him rock with that? You just let... Right. He's five. Right. And where did he get that if from? If you let this five-year-old boy decide to eat candy all day, he's going to do that. Exactly. Like, when, when did it become a good idea to let a five-year-old, let a six-year-old, let a 12-year-old make a life-changing decision for themselves? Right. When did that happen? Right. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, I don't get that. Don't and get to that. medicate these young kids that are five, six, growing up and knowing that it, it affects their brain. It affects their organs. Oh, my goodness. She's bringing it. Elder Lawyer, I don't know if you heard the interview on Vlad TV, but I'm going to tell you something. And this is showing you how far we have fallen in our society when it comes to a strong black male's male voice. Mm -hmm. She's saying more damning things against the liberal progression on children than Neo is. And no one asked this woman or came at this woman to be canceled. 
She's mm. talking about why do we allow our children to be medicated? All of these things. See? But yet, there's no, there, there's no letter group, the rainbow people, the government. No one is asking her to uh, actually uh, 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 give a statement on Twitter as an apology. As if she has the full autonomy to give an opinion. Which she should have. I mean, we're still in America, right? Mm. But a black man can't? He's very guarded. And I know his publicist is probably only a few feet away right here, Elder Lawyer. When, when these pieces are done, the publicists are not too far away. Right? Right. Usually there's canned questions and there's what? There's lines not to be crossed that could affect what? The circle. Mm -hmm. There's other people who are dependent on your talent. So that's, that's, that's where your PR people come in at, right? So the right. publicist is probably, she, she or he is probably saying, oh my, don't, he's going off the rails right here. This is not what we, this is not the frame of questions that Neil agreed to. Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all know how these publicists work, folks. Right. Come on. Let's check it out. It makes them sick. And I know but somebody phone calls are going on. Text is going. Texts are happening right now. They saying, listen, pull Neo now. I know what these publicists be doing, folks. A lot of do drugs. They're not allowed to do alcohol. Right. We can medicate he them. He can't up. drive a car yet, but he can decide his sex. Right. Oh, right. What sex orientation? And he can cut up his pee pee. And, and that to me, that makes no sense whatsoever. And it's, I, so I, I don't know if this is true. He can't drive a car, but he can determine his sex as a five-year-old. Now, that's a logical conversation that we should have on whether or not someone, uh, some, uh, whether a parent is adequate or not, uh, lawyer, right? Right. True, but I heard a rumor that they, they, they either passed or are trying to pass a law in L.A. that states if your child comes to you and asks to do some of these things and you say no, they could take your kid for yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. It just passed in California. That, does, that makes no sense. They want us to have no control over our children. But I, don't, I don't get it. In schools. I don't get it. Hospitals, libraries. Yeah, they just want to manipulate you got to understand when they're so young and they're already, that's impressionable. That's right. Fair use. And from them, they're going to believe what you say. I mean, yeah. we say Santa Claus is real. You know, the Easter and they Bunny. It. Like, right, exactly. Like, you gotta they know what they're doing. Remember who you're dealing with. Like, I, I, don't, I, I can't take credit for it, but it, I heard somebody say one time, he's like, all right, if your son comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, ask your son, son, what is a girl? Mm, that's a good one. What is he going to do? He's going to say, uh, well, he might, he might want to play with dolls. All right, you want to play with dolls. Fine, play with dolls. Right. But you're a boy right. playing with dolls. That's right. You want to wear pink. All right, cool, wear pink. But you're a boy that's right. wearing pink. I was a town boy. <laughs> I still love boy sneakers, and mm. I love my baseball cap. Doesn't mean I want to be a man. Right. It's just, I just like... Style preference is one thing. Right. Gender selection is but a whole But I like playing sports, thing. too. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I should become a boy. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. So, yeah, I'm glad we touched where, on where that. We, we totally went off topic, but I love it. I will ramble. I love it. No, I love it. I love it. I'll keep going. Look at his face. A well-needed dialogue. A well-needed dialogue. <laughs> the publishers put something out there on Twitter as if it was Neo apologizing if he offended the LBGTQ and there's more letters that I don't know about community. So Neil had to come back. Like, hold up, man. Neil had to come back on this. Fair use. What's going on, loved ones? This is Neil. All right, listen. I normally don't give too much of a damn about what y'all think about what I do, or what y'all have to say about what I say, whatever. I normally don't care because, like I said, opinions ain't special. Everybody got one. However, this is something I feel very strongly on, and I need y'all to hear this from the horse's mouth, not the publicist's computer. So check this out. 
First and foremost, I do not apologize for having an opinion on this matter. I am a 43-year-old heterosexual man raising five boys and two girls, okay? That's my reality. Now, if my opinion offended somebody, yeah, sure, I apologize for you being offended because that wasn't my intention. My intention is never to offend anybody. However, I'm entitled to feel how I feel. I'm absolutely entitled to feel how I feel the same way you are entitled to feel how you feel. I ain't asked nobody to follow me. I ain't asked nobody to agree with me. I was asked a question and I answered the damn question. Okay. I have no beef with the LBGTQIA plus community whatsoever. I ain't got no beef with y'all. Do whatever the hell it is you want to do. Do what you want to do with your kids. However, Somebody asked my opinion on this matter, and this is how I feel. I will never be okay with allowing a child to make a decision that detrimental to their life. I will never be okay with that. I don't. I, I definitely plan to educate myself a little bit more on this matter. However, I doubt that there's any book anywhere or any opinion that somebody's going to tell me that's going to make me okay with letting a child make a decision like that. That's just period, point blank, and that's how I feel. If I get canceled for this, then you know what? Maybe this is a world where they don't need a Neo no more, all right? And I got no problem with that. I'm a hustler. All right? I'll figure it out. I got kids to raise and I'm going to do that regardless. So with that being said, y'all have a good day. I love everybody. Live how you want to live. Love how you want to love. But your opinion is yours. Speak your opinion as much as you damn well feel like it. Because as I said, they're not important. They're not special. Everybody got one and you're entitled to it. I'm entitled to mine. All right. Y'all feel how y'all want to feel. Have a great day. It's Neil. Yeah, Peace yeah. Out. Brothers are standing up. Brothers are standing up because they're going to get a raw deal anyway. Even if, they, even if they follow the status quo, at the end, the enemy demonized to take anything you've actually acquired during your prime. Bill Cosby, anybody? R. Kelly, anyone? So if... Either you speak with a voice or they'll speak for you. There's more. Yes, there is. Because what Neo did, what Neo did was what any loving father would do. It's not just protecting your own children, but by extension, the children of your community. Understanding that they live vicariously through, the, through these stars. Whether we agree with it or not, that's what happens. They live, they live vicariously through the hip-hop. Through those they see on TV. That's how the poor people live. And when I grew up, we didn't have much welfare, li living in public housing, all of that. But you know what? When Michael Jackson came on, when Motown 25 came on, Guess what? We all lived through that moment. There was no internet. We were all there and seen the moonwalk for the first time. And guess what? Every child who knew how to dance learned the moonwalk. So don't tell me the media doesn't work when, when it comes to, to propaganda or programming. And that is for the better or for the worse. It has serious influence. Now, a matter of fact, speaking of Michael Jackson, <laughs> if there was no Michael Jackson, there would be no Neo. That shows you the influence. There would be no, there would be no weekend. See? There would be no Chris Brown. That's the power of media. And no one knows it more than those who suffered through World War I, World War II, Germany and all that, because they understood how the propaganda game, the propaganda through media, helped ferment a negative environment for Jewish people, which justified Germans turning their back on their own citizens because they weren't what? That's right, they weren't of the same religion as the European Jews. They weren't the same people or from the same society. Now, that leads me here. 
And, I, and, it's, and I'm just saying, we should have extra po protection politically, as they do, as any person, any sovereign person. Number one, in America, how can you censor someone's speech? You have freedom of speech whether someone agrees with your speech or not. And that's why that's why uh, Neil said, I don't care if you cancel me, folks, let me tell you. Without our God, without us coming back, we are we're canceled already. It's time for us to fight on every level necessary. Outside of carnality. Outside of carnality. And you have to realize the greatest wars are one without anyone throwing one blow or shooting one gun. Propaganda, allowing the media, the devil's tongue to demonize us, folks, they don't have to shoot us. By, by portraying our brothers and sisters in a negative light, negative sentiments can happen through other people who now deem us a threat. And by extension, they can use other people to destroy us. And I'm going to show you how this works, folks. We should never allow other people power over our image. Jamie Foxx. Now, this one, Elder Lawyer, made its way well over the pond. You know, I love going to the times of Israel. Hmm. This one made its way all the way over to Israel. Folks, I've been in the Middle East. Okay? This story made its way. They're reading about Jamie Foxx in Israel right now. What are they saying? Jamie Foxx says, they killed this dude named Jesus. We know his name as Yeshua, our Savior. In post, echoing anti-Semitic trope. Now, I, I read the tweet. I did some research. And not once did he, elder lawyer, Jamie Foxx, mention a specific group. But, obvi right. but, but obviously there's some inside baseball here. Something happened where, obviously, amongst the entertainment circles there, managers or whatever the case is, that they understand exactly who, he's who he is talking about. Even though he, he was a little vague with it, obviously there was something going on, obviously, that would disgruntle Jewish people. He never, he never called them out as a group, but the fact that he came and apologized afterwards would give me some insight to some inclination that, yeah, it must have been something similar to the, the Kanye West thing to some degree. I don't know, but if it makes its way well over to Israel, something is going on. So let's go to, to his exact tweet. Exactly what did he say? Superstar performer Jamie Foxx on Friday posted a cryptic statement. So if it's cryptic, why would he need to apologize? A cryptic statement online that appeared to be to echo an anti-Semitic tropes. They kill that dude named Jesus. And Elder Lawyer, I don't think it's a coincidence. It's at the same time our people are coming to the knowledge that that Christ was from the tribe of Judah, such as we are, the descendants of slaves, those who fled into Africa, flee in Roman persecution, that we are taking on not just what? The nationality of our Lord and Savior being Israelites. We're also taking on the shade, the demonization, as well as, as well as, the negative portrayal, the false witnessing they did against Christ, 
throwing him in prison, crucifying him, false accusations. Until this day, they have nothing good to say about him. So it's no wonder if he did it to them, to our Christ, that he would do it to Christ's people. And I think that a lot of these, especially seeing Elder Lawyer, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, uh, who killed Tyrone or something like that? Who cloned Tyrone? I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen it. Have you seen it? Yes, sir. But guess what, Elder Lawyer? I'm not surprised that the wheel is going against him, seeking to crush him, seeking to crush Jamie under the wheel. Now, you're talking about something cryptic, but serious when it comes to systematic destroying of a people, be it, be it, I mean, through programming, biologically destroying us, the food doing things to us. It's implying in the movie. So all of a sudden, this man wake up from almost a near-death experience only to go through this. Superstar performer Jamie Foxx on Friday posted a cryptic statement online that appeared to echo anti-Semitic tropes. They killed this dude named Jesus. That's right, our savior. Our king. Our blood. Okay? He was from the tribe of Judah. He wasn't a part of some of a religion. Okay? He was from the tribe of Judah, an Israelite, Hebrews 7 and 14. Read it. What do you think they'll do to you? Fox wrote on Instagram. Followed by the hashtag fake, or oh, listen to this, Elder Lawyer. You know this is cryptic. Fake friends and fake love. And you know, they had to come at him because Jamie is very witty also. Quite talented, brother. But he's very, very witty. Right? So that fake thing up there, right there, that's cryptic in of itself. And it's saying something that he don't want, that the media probably don't want us to catch on to. I don't know. Have Jamie been sitting down with uh, certain people? Who know they're Israel? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. Right? Now, let's go. Jamie issued an apology. I want to apologize to the Jewish community and everyone who was offended by my post. I now know my choice of words have caused offense, and I'm sorry. That was very, that was never my intent. To, and to clarify, I was betrayed by a fake friend. And that's what I meant when they not, when they not anything, no more. It's just not, the grammar isn't, isn't correct there. But I only have love in my heart for everyone. I love and support the Jewish community. My deepest apologies to anyone who was offended. Now, the only people who, who could be offended specifically are those who he had the disagreement with. Because I'm looking at this. Jennifer Aniston and others seen the tweet and liked it initially until the media began to come with that this particular tweet, his tweet had anti-Semitic overtones. And then she untweeted. So there's some powerful people somewhere, but I digress. He apologized, right? He don't want them to cut off his urn. He understand that here's the agreement here. We work together, but there's lines that cannot be crossed. Elder lawyer, before I go into some scriptures and I got some videos to show because we have to get to the fight now in a minute. The fight. Yes, sir. The Alabama fight. I'm getting there in a moment. I wonder why when the media, which could be Satan's tongue, propagandize our people in a negative light, that there's no what? There's no apology expected 
or warranted. What's up with that? When are they going to apologize to us? When are they going to apologize to us for their negative portrayal? Understanding what? Understanding the impact that negative press can have on a people. They should know more so than anyone. When are the other people who continually to do what? Offend us, portray us negatively. When will they apologize? Or, or are the rules one way? And I'm sure hmm. you, and Elder Lawyer, we're talking about the hypocrisy. Right. The hypocrisy. Now, let's go to a scripture real quick, Elder Lord. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Jamie yes, Foxx had to apologize. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I believe he'll be fine. We're going to get back. Thank you for all those who continue, continue to support the uh, Cash App. Thank you again. Someone just Cash App. Oh, bless you. May the most high protect you. Thank you for that. All right. Elder Lawyer, before I put the phone number up here, mm -hmm. Neil was just following scripture. He was talking about like conversations we have. Every time I'm amongst my close friends and those in the church, we all discuss how it used to be amongst our growing up amongst our family, right? There was no, listen, there was no victims. Man up, woman up. You a party pooper. Get out of here with all that crying. Get over it. Get on with your life. Right. When did we, when did we become perpetual victims? Mm. Right? And then he started talking about the children. Right? His, his, his children, his children in particular. He said, listen, I don't care what your child believe it is. My son is going to be a son. Because he is mm -hmm. a son. So my daughters will be girls, period. Five years old, don't know how to drive, need a license to drive. But you mean to tell me he can make a life-changing decision at the age of five or six? And he's only saying what many of us have said privately, but, are, but many are afraid to say in fear of getting canceled. Mm-hmm. But yet those who are propagating these ideas, they, they have what? They have the moral high ground, they have the, the bullhorn, and they can shout what they want and what they feel all they would like without any resistance. But we have to be quiet and speak quietly in our little conclaves or be canceled. What's wrong with this picture? Okay. When Bruce Jenner, now Caitlyn, was going through his experience, whatever that was, he had the biggest bullhorn throughout the earth, and guess what? Everyone had to hear it. Whether you agree with it or not, he had the right to say it under freedom of speech. Well, guess what? People should have the right to disagree or have their own voice when it comes to preserving traditional family according to God. One should be able to do this and not get canceled. What type of clown show this world have become? Let's get, let's get the Bible real quick, Elder Lawyer, before I go into the fight. Yes, sir. Proverbs, let's get it. Yes, sir. Proverbs 22, verse number six. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. No, let the child make a life-changing decision on what gender he will be at the age of five or six. What did the Bible right. say again? Read it again. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Train. And when this is, is what Neo did, Elder Lawyer. Right. And that's why he said, I'm not apologizing to y'all for this. These are my children. Train up a child in the way he should go. Read. And when he is old, 
he will not depart from it. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's what God said. And now, are you more concerned with being canceled by God? Or these sicko fans, liberals who control media and are seeking to soil our image before the world? Brothers and sisters, you don't know what come with allowing them to do this to us. You have no idea. If Nero could have came against us without propaganda, if the Romans could have came at us and just killed us outright, they would have. But they couldn't do that. Why? Because we, we were always known in Jerusalem as a peaceful people. We did more harm uh, um, amongst each other going against our God than we would do against another race. And I believe those, that those actions and those behaviors, how weird they seem, still stands today. We are more of a threat to ourselves than other people. If Nero could have what? If Nero could have went against us and Vespasian and Titus could have went against us without the political moral high ground, they would have. But it took time. It took a span of about seven years of demonizing our image to a degree where the citizens of Rome wouldn't stand with us. That they would do what? At the least, sit on their hands while the armies destroyed us. So it was a propaganda machine first. That's right. Nero, seven, seven areas at the market was burned in Rome, blaming it on the black Israelites or the black Jews in Jerusalem. That gave what? The citizenry of Rome, the moral high ground, to begin to do what? Police us in our neighborhoods in Jerusalem. Before that, there were no standing armies in Jerusalem. So we have to be careful. Our people, we think, is a joke. Our people, other lawyer, think is a joke when they use the most embarrassing images that they will find in our neighborhood and stick a camera behind it only to laugh at us throughout the earth. You don't even know what this means politically for us, folks. Me being a black man couldn't find the, the worst of Jewish people or Chinese people or any other race and put a camera behind them to embarrass them before the world. Without them canceling us literally. Demonization comes before destruction. What did Neo say? He says, train, this is what Neo said out of the Bible without knowing it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is why these sick people are trying to get to our children at an early age, at an impressionable age in our absence before we have an opportunity to influence them. These are devils. If Neo celebrated that his son said he wanted to wear a dress, Neo would be on every talk show on the earth, contracts thrown at him. Being celebrated throughout the earth because that's the image they need before destroying us. Train up a child in the way he should go. Read. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hit that like button because we going in. I'm going to show you what happens, folks, when we sit back idle and let the enemy's tongue demonize us throughout the world. Unless he falls into the liberal narrative to show us debaucherous, evil, pushing drugs, on marijuana, out of our minds, whoremongering, harlotry. Unless we fall into that profile or image they're portraying for us, folks, guess what? Unless we fall into that, we're canceled. A man can't be a man. 
Let me show you something real quick. You're canceled. You're canceled. If I may, I have a few things before we move to the fight. So lock you. Okay, go ahead, other lawyer. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Were you going to the fight or are you still on this no, topic? No, I'm going to go to the fight in a minute, but I'm not going there yet. But okay. go on. But if you have something, jump on in since it's fresh in your mind, if you will. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's any coincidence that we're touching on two specific communities that have been historically ultra sensitive. The first community, dealing with the Neo situation, you have a community that is so sensitive, that is so ultra sensitive, that you just having an opinion on how you desire to raise your children is an offense to them. How? Who knows? But for whatever reason, this community is ultra sensitive or so sensitive that just to have an opinion on the children that you have raised, who you are responsible for housing, who you are responsible for feeding, who you are responsible for clothing. The same children that your wife have labored for and probably went through health issues to bring these children forth, holding these children in her belly for nine months, no one went through that with her. She went through that herself and bear that and was willing to go through it for the sake of bringing forth a gift of God, a gift from God that was gifted to her and her husband. Yet you go through all of that and you just decide to have an opinion on how you're going to raise these children who you are responsible for and they have a problem with it. Mm. You have another community that is so sensitive that anything that brings them any level of guilt, i.e., the idea of who killed Christ. Just the very thought of who is responsible for Christ's crucifixion. Now, we know the truth of who is and who isn't. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But just the idea, just to bring up the, the, the idea of who was responsible for killing Christ. And he didn't, Jamie Foxx didn't even go deep. To me, it just sounded like he was dealing with an issue that he probably had with an associate Someone within his circle may have betrayed him, may have said some things or done some things when he was going through his little ordeal. And he referenced Christ as an example. This is something we do on an everyday basis. We, you have Christ, you have those who play the role of Christ, and you have those who play the role of Judas. That's nothing special amongst us. When we use that comparison or that example, it is not to demonize or it is not a remark that is used to attack another community. It's something that's simply related to an ordeal that we're going through where we feel like we have played the role of Christ and someone within our circle has played the role of Judas to betray him and now eventually have him crucified. But in their mind, the very idea of who was responsible for the crucifixion or getting the mob together to crucify Christ brings them guilt, mm. which, again, I don't understand. I, I mean, when we take on the idea and the identity of being the Israelites, we take on everything that comes with it. We don't only take on the blessings. We also take on the curses. We don't only take on the good aspects of what it means to be a Jew or an Israelite. We take on the negative aspects as well. And one of those negative aspects is what? That our forefathers, okay, got a, a, a mob together, a lynch mob together, to eventually have Christ crucified. We can't run from that. We have to accept that if we're going to take on the identity. These people, for whatever reason, own, they don't want to take on any aspect of the identity that places them at any level of guilt and accountability. But before we move on to the next thing, I know we have time we're dealing with. There's a few more scriptures I want to bring out and you're going to elaborate on in relation specifically to the Neo situation. OK, let's go. Yes, sir. First one, the book of Proverbs 29, verse number 15. Let me pull it up. Proverbs 25. 
Uh, 29 and 15. Uh, 29, okay. 29 and 13. Let's go. Uh, let's go up 15, verse 15. 15, all right. All right. I have it. Yes, sir. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Meaning what? You cannot leave a child to himself to make his own decisions. You cannot leave a child to herself to make her own decisions. There is a such thing as correcting a child. If you leave a child alone to make their own decisions, such as gender, that child will eventually bring you to shame. Mm. This is why the Bible says that what? There's a such thing as correcting a child. Why? Because another scripture says this, the book of Proverbs 22, 15. Let me get it. Proverbs 22, 15. Let's read it. You got yes, it. sir. This is why you cannot leave a child to make their own decisions. Proverbs 22 and 15 says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Mm. I remember being five years old. I'm pretty sure, Elder, you remember being five <laughs> years old. Yeah. I have a five-year-old son, okay? And he's well advanced beyond his years, but there's still some times where he reminds me that he's still five years old. Yeah. I remember being five years old. I remember watching Batman at five years old, me with my, my brother Yahawada. One day we were watching Batman. I was about five years old. And at one, after watching Batman fly, we thought maybe we could fly. So we got into the window of uh, my mother's apartment at the time. And we're ready to, we were challenging each other to see who would go first to jump out the window. Mm. Luckily enough, or praise the most high, there were people across the street who said, get your behind out that window. Mm. Okay. Why? Because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. If you let a child make decisions with their foolish heart, you're going to get foolish results. So the Bible says this, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm going to tell you, Elder Lawyer, Neo have, Neo have, have a little bit more leniency than I would have. Mm. When it comes to his liberal thought, even though he have, has a stance, he said if his son came to him and said, here's a Dow, he was like, yeah, you can have a Dow, but you a boy with the Dow. Right. <laughs> I don't know what house Neo grew up in. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, if my father caught me with the Dow, a matter of fact, I, here's a story of the lawyer. Christmas, you know, we grew up Christmas before. I, I was in the 20s when the Most High gave us the truth. Christmas, right? My father gets me this little, uh, these football games, but it was a little dots <laughs> that, right. you, that you have to just move through and you score a touchdown. If you touch a dot, then you, you're tackled. It was, mm. I, game, I'm going to tell you, video games have come a long way from when we were just looking at dots. <laughs> My my mother gave my my sister a, a a baby doll called Baby It's Alive. Now, Elder Lawyer, this was well before you were born, <laughs> right? Long time ago. I'm a little kid, right. and this is a time where you would have these old gothic type of scary movies like uh, Salem's Lot where there was a background of, of a society of crazy pagans and, and with, a, with the backdrop of a Catholic church. And they would have these little dolls and all that up in there. But anyway, I used to always think something was strange with these dolls where their eyes were open. Right? It's called Baby It's Alive is what it was called. And this mm. baby would get up 12, now, after I put away my game, my sister sleep, and this baby would open its eyes and start talking. Sunshine, I mean, uh, the moonlight shining in on this little crazy-looking, white-looking baby that's talking. 
And this is in the backdrop of all this other stuff, these scary movies and stuff that's out. Mm. So my sister wakes up and says, what's going on with my baby? It's alive. I said, no, nah, that's that baby is dead. I broke the head off the baby so I can get some sleep. Mm. Okay. It was no longer alive. I broke it and the thing just, just conked out and said no more. The eyes closed forever. And my father, man, did he fire me up. <laughs> That's my only interaction that I could ever think about I had with the baby doll. We knew boys is blue, girls is pink. Right? We understood. Mm. You play with trucks and cars. A matter of fact, I'll give you a tool belt. You can fix what you have to fix. But I'll tell you this. Girl stuff is here. She got the Barbie or whatever. That's the only interacting I had with a baby doll all of my life, which was that baby, it's dead story. My, my big brother Poochie will tell you about it. I mm. bro, I, man, I, uh, I totally broke the neck off of this thing. Right? It was waking me up, and then it would blink and look at me. I'm like, okay. Maybe the most I had it in me along, you know, in me, understanding that eventually I was going to be speaking against these idols and these spirits and stuff that they bring in with these doll babies. Let mm -hmm. alone, right? But anyway, at the end of the day, men and women, boys and girls are different. Right. We're different. Period. And I'm going to talk about it this weekend. We're going to talk about it. We're different. And I think one of the greatest frustrations, don't, I'm not trying to kick the can, I'm not trying to move to another subject. I think the biggest issue we have as men and women not being able to come together is that either side are expecting either side are expecting the other side to understand the way it would understand. No. It don't work that way. Men will never see things as women. And that's the frustrating thing that happens in relationships. Women will never see things as men. And we're running around beating our heads to the, to the floor, to, uh, on the wall, saying, I don't understand why this person don't understand me. No, I, I do understand you. I understand you as me being a man and you being a woman. Mm -hmm. It's these crazy Babylonian psychologists who made, who turned the world upside down by creating this idea that men and women see things the same. When we all understood our place, the world was fine. That's how we got here. When we all knew our place, man is a man and woman as a woman. And guess what? I'm not the type of person that's going to try to break myself into believing that I can <laughs> that I can see things as a woman or vice versa. I don't have no time for that. <laughs> okay, I'm right. a man. I'm a man according to everything the Most High said a, a man should be. Period. Okay, I'm here to do what? I'm here to please him. I'm here to serve him. Now, the next level, let's, let's bump down one level. Woman from man, you're here to please man. You're here mm -hmm. to serve man. That's your purpose. Somewhere Satan then, then, then twist that all up. Right? Children. Children, because women are the first conveyors of culture and tradition. They're nurtured and taught and trained through the mother who brings what? The culture and tradition until the child is weaned off of the mother and then trained by the father. Simple, isn't it? And whoever resists their position, that means a man acquiescing, acquiescing 
under a woman. No, you're supposed to please and do what you're supposed to do, provide, protect, and all that, and love your woman. Yes. But you're not supposed to acquiesce under her. That's out of order. That's out of order. That's God. That's, we do that with God. Okay? <laughs> we're not climbing over the woman to get our God. No. We're with God first. Okay? And we seek to serve him, and the Most High provides what a blessing so that we can provide and protect for our family. Proper order. We're going to talk about that this Sunday. Yes, sir. All right. But I have to break it down because it's, I mean, I don't know if that sounds like uh, calculus in the world we live today. Hence the reason why um, Neo had to break it down once and for all. Say, well, listen, man, I'm, I, we out of this playing crazy games with you people. Mm. You do what you want to do with your children. But when I looked, when we looked down and our children came out, guess what? They weren't assigned anything. What was between their legs, male or female, by God, even if it was, even if they didn't have any, this was, even before birth certificates, we knew what a boy and girl was. It's not no assignment. Right. So these psychologists plays with words. Oh, no, you don't understand the psychology of the assignment. No, nah, he was assigned a boy or girl. Well, what was Noah? There was no birth certificates. <laughs> he wasn't assigned. It was God who... who I don't even deal with this nonsense, how they try to play on people's mind through psychology. It's utterly ridiculous. Now, let's get back to demonization, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, I had two more scriptures, if you don't no, mind. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry topic. about that. I'm sorry. Come on. No, sir. No, no, no problem. Uh, the book of Sirach 7 and 24, I'll take this very quickly. No, take it your says time. Here, take your time. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Sirach 7 and 24. Oh, let me, let me Pass down daughters. Let, let me grab it for you. Yes, sir. I'll just read a piece of this one and move on to the last one. Sirach 25 and what? Uh, 7 and 24. Sirach uh, 7 and 24, sir. Okay, one second. And I'm glad you're going here, lawyer, because this falls right into my next clip, actually, mm. once you get these two. Yes, sir. Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Let's read it. Has thou daughters... Have a care of their body. So if you have daughters, in other words, if you have daughters, your daughters are your responsibility. So if your daughters are your responsibility, your opinion on how you are to raise those daughters is up to you and the mother of that daughter. Not anyone else. Not no community. Not no, you know, some philosopher. Not no doctor. Uh not some, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to refrain from using certain terminology, but your children are your responsibility. Period. If Not you the have government. daughters, you raise your daughters to do what? Become women. Not you don't raise your daughters to now become or you didn't have a daughter in hopes that your daughter would one day become a son or had a son in hopes that your son would one day become a daughter. If you have daughters, it is your responsibility to raise them. To do what? Become women. Last verse. Sirach 30 and uh, 3 through 6. You can elaborate on this one, uh, Elder. Okay. Sirach 30, 3 through 6. Let's do it. Yes, sir. I have it. Yes, sir. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Hold up. You need to stop right there, Elder Lawyer. That's deep in of itself. This grieves them when mm -hmm. we, when a man instill manhood in a young boy. It's contrary to the program and our propaganda they want out there for us as weak victims. When we, when every race should have a war class. Mm -hmm. A war class is what? It's the buffer that would do what? That would dissuade the enemy from coming in. So you never want to show weakness. 
regardless of what they say about the thugs and people sh doing and all that, and guess what? In our community and all that, you can say what you want. And I don't agree with the activity. But other nations know you're not coming in the hood to try us outright. Mm -hmm. You better come with a sideways way of getting rid of us to have us agree with something that we would probably be naive about. You, you have to come sideways like you probably did with some of the people in the last couple of years. Mm. You can say what you want about our people. The last thing you want to do is engage us where we understand you're coming for us. So they know that's a lose-lose right there. You don't want to galvanize the, war, the warriors in us. Especially if we have the moral high ground. You get stomped out. I think I got a video on that. Mm. So they try to indirectly do what? Let's get to the children and teach their war class that it's okay for them to choose to wear a dress. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. And guess what? This is my religious opinion. I'm not here about any group or whether or not you are part of a group. I have nothing to do with that. I'm a part of the group. It's called God's people. We believe in the Bible. That's right. So one thing about when you teach the Bible, you don't have to walk on eggshells. It's thus saith the Lord. If you have a problem, go talk to him. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. The enemy is upset. That we won't allow them to psychologically and, and or, if it's allowed, physically, we won't allow them to castrate our sons. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends, he shall rejoice. Mm. That's right. Before your friends, like, look at my son. That's to chip off the old block. That's an extension of me. Okay? I'm proud of him because what? The legacy continues. They, they don't want legacy. It grieves, it grieves the enemy, the devil's media, that there's still men out there who will, who will stand for what's right, even if you choose to cancel them. Right. Read on, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Though his father die, yet he is though he were not dead. Look at that. <laughs> Come For on. He have left one behind that is like himself. He have left one behind that is like himself. And that's what Esau don't want. I'm speaking of the Edomites in power because they have a problem with their little brother Jacob. Where Jacob? And they don't want the message that's coming out. Folks, you can say what you want. They're quaking in their boots right now. Because guess what? The young men are being taught by men, even indirectly, sneaking online, and are learning this truth. The children of Israel wholesale, the men, have left the pagan churches. You can say what you want. We're no longer in, in those conclaves. And this is what they fear, because at least in the Christian church, the Jesuits, the Romans had some form of control. They can indirectly control us through their theology. Now, look, we got our own Bible back. We even have our own Bible classes back. Hebrew news. The, let me tell you, the academy, there's nothing like it. And they're quaking in their boots because now we're teaching brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike to understand the true narrative of the Bible to a degree where you can be a layman, someone who never knew the Bible at all, have more knowledge of scripture when it comes to its context than learn theologians. That's what they fear. These young men that's growing up in this word are going to be something to be reckoned with. And it says right here, mm -hmm. for he have left one behind him that is like himself. Come on. 
while he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him, and when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. There you go. Come on. And one that shall requite kindness to his friends. And one that shall requite kindness to his friends. They understand the power of our genetics, folks. This is why they're doing everything to split the family, to cause dissension between man and woman, and to, above all, portray us in a negative image through propaganda. Elder Lawyer, anything else? No, sir, that's it. I want to show this real quick, Elder Lawyer. Going back here, for those who initially missed it, I showed the three steps of propaganda from the, from the Holocaust Museum where the Jewish people said, never forget. And through, that, through this, it tells us the propaganda the Nazis used to demonize the European Jews before destroying them. So these are the three facts they want all of us to remember which is the, the power of propaganda that was used against their community. Number one, the Nazis were skilled propagandists and used sophisticated advertising techniques and the most current technology of the time to spread their messages. Instagram, anyone? In the internet, anyone? So they would have what? The technology to sway Citizens against a specific group at this time, Nazis or German citizens against Jews. Number two, once in power, Adolf Hitler created a ministry of public enlightenment and propaganda to shape German public opinion and behavior. The power of media, folks. That's why I tell you, don't listen to them. Listen to God. Filter what they're saying through God and you'll understand their true plans through media. Number three, Nazi propaganda played, played an integral role in advancing the persecution and ultimately the destruction of Europe's Jews. It incited and fostered a climate of indifference to their fate. Now, folks, why is this so deep? Because the Jews saying never again. See, what's deep here, folks, is because they realize, according to the propaganda machine, they realize that if they would have got in front of the demonization that Germany used against them, that maybe the Holocaust wouldn't have happened as reported in history. How they had what? Uh, 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 Adolf Hitler using what, deform images and cartoons to portray them a certain type of way, making them a laughing stock in Germany like the minstrel show that was created here for blacks in America as the butt of everyone's jokes. You don't understand how that plays out long-term politically if you allow that to happen. How others will view you as what? As a societal and political threat against their cultures and future societies. So if they understand propaganda has this weight that would lead to many people incarcerated or destroyed, why would anyone in the media allow negative portrayals on us? Huh? Now there's something, Elder Lawyer, I wanted to show real quick before I show the fight. I'm going to show you where this Sir. goes, right? Hold on. I want I want to show y'all something, folks. <laughs> What's before you here? What's before you us here, brothers and sisters? Is the Edmund Pettus Bridge, right? Let's talk about the Edmund Pettus Bridge real quick. Selma, Alabama. 
The Edmund Pettus Bridge, now a National Historic Landmark, was the site of the brutal, bloody Sunday beatings of civil rights marchers during the first march for voting rights. This happened in 1965, folks. And what happened? We're talking about what? Decorated politicians, police, and others, whites in particular, dealing with almost a massacre on our people who marched over the bridge, which really spearheaded and really from a human rights standpoint, it really swung the sympathy or empathy throughout the earth on the side of our people where the whole world had to recognize and stand up for us. That why? 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 Because there was no sagging pants crossing the bridge. There wasn't no Sukihana and harlot culture and all that crossing the bridge. Guess what, folks? We had on our Sunday's best. The women were dressed in their best. The children were dressed in their best. And the men were distinguished. And that image alone swung the sentiments throughout the earth on our side against the injustice and racism that happened against us. Doesn't matter whether or not it was an Irish man on that side attacking us who was white, whether it be an Irish, whether it been a Jewish white man, or whether it was an Italian. It didn't matter who was attacking us. We had the higher moral ground of protection. Above all, we had God on our side. But what we represented was a people who didn't warrant the attack at Edmund Pettus Bridge. And that changed everything. So the enemy now had to shift. We have to give these, these people something until we can find a way to destroy their image. Because if there was thugs crossing the bridge, no one would have came came for our turn to protect us. If there were women speaking vulgarity and, 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 and all types of evil when it comes to debauchery crossing the bridge, no one would have came to our defense. They say we have to be patient. We have to work to change their image first. And this is where the propaganda machines of the Nazis come in for today, folks. And I'm showing you history along with Bible to let you understand, folks, how we aid in our own destruction by perpetuating the images that they're pushing. If they know the power of propaganda, brothers and sisters, and how it can be used to destroy a people, why would their propaganda machine Fly our sisters overseas, Elder Lawyer. Some of our people, right, we know that there's not, you know, there's classless people throughout all society. But think about this. Why would you fly over in embarrassment someone who won't hide their shame to represent us internationally as an ambassador for our community? Because what, brothers and sisters, they know the long-term fallout for this when it comes to the propaganda machine. They flew this woman over, Sukihana, over in London. And guess what? The same PR people that's behind the, the, all of the entertainers, folks, they know the image to push that's accepted. And she goes out, and I can't even play some of the stuff she said. But who do you think is following her on this camera, folks? 
These are satanic liberals embarrassing us overseas. I'm trying to get my coochies. Well, well, look. She's over there talking some of the most vulgar things that she's looking to do that night. With who? The paparazzi following her, goading her on to destroy our sister's image. They're finding people in our neighborhoods to promote that would give us a negative image. Understanding what? That's right, folks. How war is waged first by destroying image. She's talking about she's going to get something happening to her. I can't even play it. All overseas, they're doing this, folks. And y'all have to understand why I'm going here. Because of what they said concerning what? Nazi propaganda. We're not supposed to allow them to take what? The bottom of society to actually what? Portray us publicly, internationally. Folks, this is why when Martin Luther King and others were operating, they understood the power of image. There's certain people they couldn't have represent them or be seen with them. It was like, listen, you for our cause, but you don't represent the image that would do what? That would present us in a righteous light before the world. Our right's still going to protect you, but you're not, we're not going to take the worst of us and put, us, put them in front of us. Why do you think Joe Biden interviewed who? Cardi B. An embarrassment politically. On his way to the White House. Why do you think he did that? The whole world was looking at this. It's demonization before destruction. Nazi propaganda. And the Jewish people know about this. I'm reading it on their site. That this is what they do before they come, at, come after a people and destroy a people. They allow a negative propaganda first. So that there will be no one to save you when, when the armies come after you. So we have to stand up, man, I'm telling you. Because guess what? What happens next? Now that no one respects who you are, given enough time, elder lawyer, they was able to tarnish the image that was made from our forefathers who stood with class, who were distinguished, like what? Like our distinguished Martin Luther King, our humble and intelligent Coretta Scott King, and others. And you notice, elder lawyer, at that time, the musicians were in the back. The entertainers couldn't represent us politically. You had to what? You had to be what? You had to be distinguished, respected. See? He was a Bible man. He believed in the Bible. Family man. Shabazz and Malcolm, look at them. The, the optics of image meant everything. Because what? That Edmund Pettus Bridge, folks? When the world seen the white man destroy our families who are wearing suits walking over that bridge, folks, it changed everything. They said, no, nah, these aren't degenerates. They're wearing the suits we wear. They love their children like we love ours. And they're unarmed and getting attacked by these animals. So when you allow an image 
to be plastered over the world for years, over and over and over again, at the same time the world is pushing divisive politics, it won't be too long before those in Alabama where we crossed that bridge would think to do this. Fair use. And that brother jumped in the water. Are you kidding me? Get up there, young buck. Get up there, young buck. Get up there, young buck. We got action, baby. He ain't gonna do nothing. Arrest that Look at that. It won't be too long, elder lawyer, before if you demonize and show us debaucherous and show us with no integrity, Without any level of morality, it won't be too long before these same people who destroyed us at Pettit's Bridge in Alabama begin to think it's okay to attack us at will. Now, of course, right. of course, they got the royal Judah stomped down. But folks, I'm going to tell you this now. You don't know how the intellects amongst Esau will use this to have it backfire on us. They are so happy this, this, this have happened in the midst of a political race where they're looking for something to divide black or white against white people to get our people out to vote against the same people who've destroyed us. See, I'm getting in front of it before CNN does it. Because the only thing they need is this fight, even though they didn't plan this, to sway our sentiments to believe that it's about voting strictly because Democrats aren't racist and it's to stand against that white guy who attacked the black man. That's the only reason they'll, put, they'll pull it off. When Democrats have done more destructive behavior against us, and continue to do so since the time we came in on ships from 1619, folks. Yeah, they got the royal Judah treatment. The lion put paws on them. Thank the Most High for that. But all in all, what make that drunk man believe that he could just fire off at a brother? It's the image that have been portrayed for years where now they feel justified now. They've been having these conversations. It's time to root out the cancer that have become these people who are debaucherous, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And this man doing his job who have nothing to do with the image that's getting portrayed must now pay for that. He must now pay for how we're being portrayed throughout the earth where someone feel that they can engage us for any reason. Don't think that it's not connected, folks. It definitely is. When a sister come up missing and something happens to a sister, when a sister go overseas and get attacked, don't think, don't think it's not because of what was portrayed in society where we allow our sisters to be portrayed as less than human and nothing more than something to be laid down with. Don't think that don't have an impact on how our good sisters are viewed, who do right by God, who's humble, who's loving with morality. They won't portray that, but they will show who? They'll show Lizzo. The minstrel show of Lizzo and embarrass us worldwide. And now it's coming out, Elder Lawyer, some of the charges from her background singer. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would make R. Kelly 
uh, look like a choir boy. I'm reading, the, I'm reading some of the transcripts and the stories coming out. I'm going to bring it out in the news. I, I mean, Austin Holloman from, uh, from Passport Bros is coming on the Academy so he can give an interview. He've already, already solidified it because we need to know why he, he's, he decided to do something like this. What is he seeing from his age range? And what can we do to fix certain things in his Humble opinion. And uh, let me tell you, he's going to be on this coming Sunday. It's going to be a great, a great dialogue. For the first time, we're going to do many guests in the academy as we go. But something is happening in America where we're allowing these satanic liberals to do what? To egg this foolishness on, not realizing how it's going to blow back on our brothers and sisters. Elder Lawyer. There was a thing these sisters are suing. They're, they're suing Lizzo now. Because she had a thing where the girls and guys would go in the back, allegedly. And this was on the transcripts in the media. And they are alleging charges that it was anti-Christ scenarios going on with. If you read the Bible, they were being religiously ostracized. But who would want to be on, their, on that type of <laughs> entertainment, sir, be it within that circle, knowing the debauchery they do on stage as a Christian, I don't know. But outside of that, they had a thing where they was using fruit. Bananas in particular and all this, uh, uh, where, where, where Lizzo and others are accused of using these things, you know, I can't even explain what they were doing with this stuff, but the background sing singers had to participate. In this debauchery. And they're publicizing it throughout the earth now. Because we allow them to use the embarrassments. The mascots to represent us throughout the earth. Folks. I'm going to tell you. And we laugh and joke about everything. You don't know what this does to our image. You don't understand how it blows back on an innocent person. Who have nothing to do with these people. Which leads us here, Elder Lawyer, last but not least. Mm -hmm. At least six people considering joining lawsuits against Lizzo, says plaintiff's lawyers. That's right, folks. After they use you and destroy your image, they expose you and, and break their toys. They use this woman for more than a few evil, evil portrayals throughout the earth and have totally denigrated and destroyed the image of what a, a, a nice, good black woman, a Judite, a daughter of Zion should be. She's everything against it. Everything. And I'm not talking about a weight struggle. I'm talking about how she's been politically utilized to totally destroy the, the virtuous image of our daughters, of our women. And now they're done with their toy. I don't even want to go into what's going on with this girl. And you know what? It's a shame because a lot of this, she was egged on. They egged this on, folks. Mm -hmm. It was liberals behind pushing this. This woman wasn't happy doing this stuff. But now she must suffer with the image of our sisters. Last but not least, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Where are we going? Thank you, AC, for sending this to me. Here it is now, now that our image has been destroyed. City Councilman Trayvon White on Tuesday, asked the National Guard to step in amid the district's rise in crime. How did, did you know martial law was going to come like this? 
You destroy the image first, the same modus operandi as the Romans in 70 AD against our people, which led to them, what? Policing Jerusalem. And now, the liberals that was voted in, yeah, let's defund the police, but bring in the National Guard. You, you can't make this up. And look at these simpletons all together, not realizing who they are allowing, who are they begging for to come in their communities. Defund the police? Folks, if you've got the National Guard guarding you, you will beg for the day a police was in your neighborhood. And this is what it is, demonization, and now it justifies a quasi-martial law. Mm -hmm. And mind you, our people are fed up. We're tired already. Why do you think those Alabama boys Caught, caught the lion paws. Can you imagine with our people suffering in the neighborhoods, being financially uh, 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 barred out of business, no jobs, giving it to everyone else, and then the National Guard try to come and instigate something in the community? Folks, this is a keg which will soon pop and the propaganda Gandai's controllers know it. This is right out of the Nazi playbook. And don't forget, Nazi also came with medical experiments on the poor. Huh? Huh? Yes, demonization before destruction. I submit today that now was worse than, it's, than it was then, White said. Why? Because I've never seen this onslaught of violence portray on our women and kids. Now, check him out. He want the National Guard to come in, elder lawyer, to protect the women and children. I'll show you how backwards things are. While Neil is getting canceled for protecting his sons and daughters by stating he will not allow any liberal uh, 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 LBGT or gender teachings in his home. So, so now they're going to protect the women and kids when it's convenient. Now they care about the kids? Right. Now they care about the children when it comes to justifying what the elite wanted the whole time. Boots on the ground in our communities. And during the George Floyd uh, uh, debacle, a lot of that was beta tested in the same major cities where, where you'll soon see the army. And, we got, and guess what this guy don't realize? Who is he again? D.C. council member? This is what you don't realize, Mr. Council member. When it's martial law, you're no different than any other black man in that same community you're asking the National Guards to police. You think they're going to single you out because you have a, a daishiki under your, your, suit, your suit jacket? No, I'm the councilman. Oh, no, I'm the reason you're here. And they're going to say, okay, boy, get in line. Thank you for opening the door. He don't realize he's opening the door to his own stomp down. This is 70 AD all over again. And it comes by allowing what? Allowing the media to operate as the devil's tongue. Anything, Elder Lawyer, before we uh, 
open up the lines? Yes, sir. Just a few scriptures on the, the propaganda as it pertains to our, our, our sisters that you were just bringing out. I'll okay. just read this. You can elaborate. Okay. Chapter and verse, sir. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 26. I'll start at verse number eight, but I'll jump around. Ecclesiasticus 26 verse 8. And like I said, Elder Lawyer, a lot of brothers and sisters don't know what it, you know, I think we downplay or underestimate when women like Sukiana represents us internationally overseas. But the, mm -hmm. but the, but the media and the, and the paparazzi know exactly what they're doing with this. Folks, mm -hmm. because that might be the only example of those on the outside of the country to experience what a sister is personally. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why sisters going to have to stand up and say, you know what? No more of this. OK, if you can come out with anti-Semitism when someone is putting a negative light on your group. If you can come out with xenophobia when someone is putting a negative light on your group. If you can come out with homophobia when someone is putting a negative light on your group. Sisters got to say, listen, no more of the hip hop and debauchery from these videos will you have representing us without political blowback. If you don't represent us the way we want to be represented, the way we choose our representatives. We'll tell you who to put in camp, camp, camera in front of. We're not trying to find some wino on the corner of your community to put a camera in front of him and, 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 and dress him up and, put a, and show him as your representative online. And sisters in particular are going to have to stand up and say, nah, no more of this. Because, we, because our sisters have to suffer from this madness. Being looked at as less than. And they wonder why no one is talking to them. They feel like re they're being rejected, not even realize that, that, that it's actually through proxy. The, we're not the only people. We're not the only people in America who, who, who is actually impacted through the power of media. Other people in other countries shape their, their understanding of, of you based on your representatives. And Esau know this. So they allow this girl Sukiana to go, go over and embarrass all of our people. And I know some good women. But the devil's media isn't going to show any of these women. Ever. It's a shame. That we allow, mm -hmm. we allow them to choose the worst of our people as representatives. And they understand what this does, folks. It's demonization before, and it's justifying the UN and all of them to let the armies loose on our people and be justified without the blowback that they had during the civil rights movement. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. And it just shows that the enemy, he understands propaganda, and he understands psychological warfare. So, for example, all of these are examples of things that the Bible tells us to try to avoid, to not be. Yet the enemy takes these same images that the Bible tells us not to be, not to replicate, uh, uh, not to imitate, and he makes these the popular images for us to imitate. So, for example, starting at verse 8, again, I'm going to jump around. Ecclesiastes 26 and 8. A drunken woman and a gather abroad cause of anger, and she will not cover her own shame. Mm. Someone asked, who is Sukiana? Sukiana is the latest debaucherous rapper they have out there who speaks of all types of vulgarity in the bedroom. And that's an understatement. Some of the most nastiest things she put behind behind trap music of what she allowed to happen to her. And, I'm, and, and that's as clean as I can be on a Bible show, folks. She went uh, uh, and even 
I mean, wh where's the one video? I can't even, I won't even play what she said, folks. But it's, it's, it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing. And it's these same people with their cameras behind this girl, goading her on to misrepresent who we are. She's talking about getting stretched and all this other crap. Cool Embarrassing. And we're talking about the paparazzi and PR people who know exactly what this does. This is how they want you portrayed, folks. You try to put a camera behind a white woman or a Jewish woman or an Asian woman as the paparazzi and allow her to go throughout this earth like this and see how long you last. Or an Arab woman and see how long you last. I'm trying to get my coochie. Now let me make it clear. We've always seen people like this in, in the neighborhood. And they weren't to be taken seriously. It's not like this just cropped up from nowhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. We knew that, okay, there's a place for that separate from the prestigious or representatives of our people until she find Christ. No way we would have allowed Martin Luther King and others would allow them to march her around like this. They, they, they cherry pick people out of the neighborhood that they know who would, who, who's going to totally destroy our image within no time. It's not like people like this didn't exist. These were the people like, okay, yeah, she's coming. Yeah, yeah, anyway. But they... They, 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 I'm going to tell you, folks, they meticulously came in and found this in our culture, the worst in our culture, and say, you know what? We're going to take the belly, the low of the, the culture, and totally destroy their image publicly throughout the earth. Why are they doing it such at this time, folks? Because we know we're Israel now. And they can't stand the fact which they can claim to it. So they're not going to find an Israelite woman who follow God's law, who's humble, submissive, who's modest, who's loving, who loves her children. They exist, whether they are Israelites or don't know the Israelites. These women exist in number, but they'll never they'll never show them publicly internationally anymore because because this is the optics they want on our people before destroying them. They were like, yeah, these are, the, these are the women who are raising the next generation of children, folks. That's how they're portraying this overseas. And if you think this is something, she's in London now. It won't be long before she's in China to look to disrupt our culture or the Middle East to seek to disturb our culture. Mm -hmm. Right. See? That's why they took her over there and put a camera in front of her. There's many days we've seen women like this in the community acting out, getting drunk out of their minds. Say, listen, go home and go get some sleep, girl. Mm -hmm. You don't travel overseas and make her an ambassador who represents our people. And, and guess what? The paparazzi, her PR people, all of them have been, were goading her on before the cameras rolled. And I wonder what ethnicity or religion they were a part of. I wonder. Let's finish reading before the calls. We're, we're going to wrap this up quick tonight, but I just wanted yes, to sir. show you this real quick. Elder Lawyer, let's get to the uh, scriptures real quick. Yes, sir. Verse 8. A drunken woman and a gatter abroad cause of great anger, and she, shall, she will not cover her own shame. A drunken woman. 
in a gather abroad. Every church should have had an apocrypha in it. Every church. A drunken woman and a gather abroad. That means a woman. Oh, that's a woman who can't control her mouth. She don't even realize that she's an embarrassment. She think this is cute. Mm-hmm. A drunken woman and a gather abroad. And it calls of great anger and she will not cover her own shame. And she will not cover her own shame, folks. Not that I'm about royalty and all these others when it comes to uh, the area of England where the castle is, Elder Lawyer. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, folks, she's doing this right Right in front. Right in front of the castle. Right in front of what you would call royalty, where the prestigious and class is within London. See, they're strategic with this, folks. They want us to compare what our women have become in comparison to white Edomite royalty. See? A, and the Bible tells us, a drunken woman in a gather abroad, cause of what? Cause of great anger. Cause of great anger. She will not cover her own shame. And she won't even, she don't even know she's an embarrassment. And then it's a shame because she meet up with another satanic operator, so-called Umar Johnson from Philadelphia. That's what, no one in Philadelphia take that brother seriously. Embarrassment. Only so he can get some type of recognition online, clout chasing. And she will not cover her own shame. Read. Yes, sir. Verse 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks. Her haughty and looks eyelids. and eyelids. And eyelids. Now, I'm not the fashion police or whatever the case is, but they have to be something with these eyelids. With these eyelashes. And it comes down to there's a time and place for everything. Mm hmm. Somebody fancying themselves and prettying themselves up for certain occasions, okay. But I think one of the biggest destructions within our communities right now that have overtaken our community is the spirit of vanity. Where we've, we've lost ourselves in these alter egos or avatars. Read. And if I can mention this before moving on to the next verse, what the Bible is showing us is that there's a typecast. And again, we're not the fashion police, but the Bible is showing us that there's a typecast for what the Bible calls a harlot or a whorish woman. Yeah. And there used to be a time period in which you could identify a harlot based on her attire. But through the propaganda machine, they have taken the typecast of a harlot, herald that image throughout the four corners of the earth, predominantly towards our people, and now you have a thing in our community where sisters who would normally dress separately or, or would be identified as otherwise because they did not used to dress in the same fashion of harlotry have now adopted the fashion of the harlot. Now you can't tell the difference. Now everyone looks or have taken on the same exact typecast that the Bible warns us about. Yeah, and I'm glad you bring that out. We're going to talk about that a little bit more this coming Sunday, how the good girls are those who normally wouldn't deal with that provocative fashion, feel pressured to do so now.
Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why they they said it. They said it so. They said it so so that now you you'll get caught in the shrapnel that comes with what happens to the weaponry. Uh, along with the attacks on those who are operating that way. Now, no one knows the difference. Mm -hmm. And what's just to say, well, I have to do this because, uh, you know, these are the men, these are the, these are the women that men look at. Men have always looked at women. But those are not the women men marry. We have to get out of this looks things because a man looks somewhere that he wants that person. Again, an entirely, one second. They'll begin to believe, hold on. Okay. Are we still there? Hold on. I believe so. Okay. They'll begin to believe that how they think of an attraction is how men do so. No. And they, they feel pressured on Instagram seeing other girls or a guy they may like liking a girl that's dressed pr provocative, provocatively as a threat to why they need to do so. But the Bible tell you, I'm going to show you how men think. And the Bible tell you, sisters. This is how the Bible teaches. This is how men think. And see, the Bible in of itself is a patriarchal, patriarchal literature. So if you want to know how a man thinks, listen to the scripture. Not mm -hmm. Steve Harvey. Right. That's nonsense. Act like a woman and think like a man. Utterly ridiculous. An impossibility. You want to know how mm. men think? The Bible is led through a patriarchal, it's patriarchal literature. It tells you how men think. Mm -hmm. The whoredom, 26 and 9, the whoredom of a woman may be known in her hearty looks and eyelids. A man, that's right, determine whether or not a woman is loose immediately. Based on this, mm -hmm. her outward appearance, 10, if thy daughter be shameless, that means she have no self-awareness, that she's willing to put herself out there provocatively, that, that could be what? That can be really to her detriment. Because shameless doesn't mean, shameless means you're putting yourself out there and somebody can harm you. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, that means she has no self-awareness being provocative and doing all these things to attract sexual attention. Keep her in straightly. Don't let her loose. The last thing you need to do is liberate her according to the Bible. And what mm -hmm. did Satan do? Satan gave liberation. Freedom to free yourself from your own man. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch what? Liberty. Mm -hmm. Liberation. Right. So a man makes a determination immediately on whether or not this woman is a wife or something else. So many women are being pressured into becoming the everything else. Don't realize, not even realizing, you're in competition with what? The base of women. The bottom. That's who you're in competition with. And you think because, oh, my man looked at her and he, he thought she was this, and let me get a BBL, let me do this. No. Nah. Men don't want her 
for marriage. And how mm-hmm. you, and, and this is how you distinguish yourself, sisters. You become the reverse of that. Don't care about the attention. The Bible tell you, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Where there's more eye, where, where, where more eyes are, the destruction happens. So don't worry about the looks. And I'm going to go there. Don't worry about how many people. Oh, well, I notice I get more attention when I look like this. No. The Bible tells men. The Bible speaks for men. It does. More men are liking all of these pictures and all that because it gives them a foot in the door. (laughs) Okay. With a small chance, he'll score. So liking, 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 you have these guys out there liking everything they see. And I'm going to go, we're going to talk about that this coming Sunday. It doesn't mean that that these are the women he wants, that a man wants. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through over much liberty, liberation. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that liberation should have happened for our women. There was nothing to be liberated from. We were on the bottom going through chattel slavery, fighting the enemy together. Watch over an impudent eye and marvel not if she trespass against thee. Watch over a woman who's always, who head is on a swivel. Or Oh, can I see your phone for a second? What phone? Mm-hmm. I seen a video the other day, Elder Lawyer. A woman held on to the back of a window with the window barely open while the man was slowly driving the car because her phone was in the car. Mm. Almost risked her life running on the side of the car, saying, no, 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 because the phone was in the car. Mm. (laughs) And it says, Elder Lawyer, she will what? It says here. She will And I'll jump uh, 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 down in a few moments. Go ahead. In fact, I'll jump there very quickly, if you don't mind. Go ahead. You got it. Yes, sir. Verse number 22, and then after that, 26, that'll be it. Yeah. Uh, Verse 22, and harlot shall be accounted as spittle. Mm. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. But a what? But a married woman. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. Is a tower tower against death to her husband. So the Most High is showing, is, is delineating distinguishing between the good women the media don't promote and the rest. Mm -hmm. The women that the media, the devil's tongue promote, are like spit to God. Mm -hmm. And I know that seems harsh. And that's because, especially with women, it seems harsh to them because why? They have connected themselves strictly as women to sympathize with women and to relate to women not realizing you've attached yourself to a sinking anchor that shouldn't represent you. But the most high does the divide. A married woman is a tower against death to her husband. Mm -hmm. She would very well jump in front of a bullet for her man. Mm -hmm. That's right. And she's working to protect him even when he don't know he's getting protected by it. She's working to keep his image intact. She's working to have him what? Have him viewed as the image of God. 
and the Most High says the other women, nah. They counted as spit. Mm. And that's harsh. What else you have, Elder Lawyer? Yes, sir. Last verse, verse 25. And guess what? And it's deep because people say, let's talk about the men. There's always men for these women. Mm -hmm. hey, the, hey, let me read 23 before I read 25. Okay, let's read it. <laughs> a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Thank you. The man that's with these women are just as worse. Mm -hmm. So you get what you got. <laughs> you want to talk about the man? He's right. with these women. Okay. But what? But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. But a godly woman is given to him that fear the most high. Period. And this is why they don't want this Bible. The synagogue of Satan and other, other them, they talk about everything except this Bible because this Bible does what? It makes a dividing line. There is no in-between you can get in-between. There is no gray areas. You Either you're down with God or you're not. You're either righteous or not. See, but Satan liked to play in the gray area. See? And now sisters can stand up and say, well, no. I'm going to delineate. I'm going to divide myself. I do not want to be recognized with the rest of these women. Same, because guess what? Men already, men already do it. I don't, I don't, I don't know if y'all recognize, folks. Men, are, men have done this for years. There have never been a thing where whatever one man does, all men follow. No. There was never, folks, I'm going to tell you this right now. There was never a sagging pants moment throughout my existence. Okay? And there's men under me, young men under me, who would have never uh, 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 operated outside of some level of class and proper decorum. Okay? I mean, even Jay-Z, he went from the fitties and all that and the hats and the, and the long uh, 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 sports shirts and all that, and the next thing you know, he got too old for that and said, you know what, it's time to put on a suit. Okay? Because we need, we need a, a, a serious distinction between what we are and who we are and these others. You can recognize them right off the bat, whether or not they, whether or not, you know, that they're actually for something. Right. Mm -hmm. You can even go into the hood. You can go into the hood and you can look at it and say, I can e easily distinguish a brother or sister who's about something and everyone else. We've always, it's always been a distinction like that. But as we come closer to the end, the lines have blurred. The lines have blurred, especially amongst women. There's this competition thing. But women are going to have to say, you know what? I'm good. I don't want to be mixed up with the rest of these women, especially the way we're being portrayed overseas. What you got uh, last but not least, Elder Lawyer? Right. Uh, verse 25. And I want to make this clear. This is why we're bringing this out. This ain't to attack women. It's to show the imagery that they've been using through propaganda to promote it to the rest of the women within our community. Yeah. So and that I'll, we can adopt, so that yeah. our women could adopt this culture. And let me tell you, usually when we, um, usually when we go into this, we have to first frame it with a modifier, not mm -hmm. to offend anyone. But if you came right. in late without seeing the whole broadcast, you'll be confused. Right. If you came in on this part about it, I would say hold your opinion until you see the whole thing. Because what we're talking about 
is the Nazi, the Nazi propaganda on how they use the negative in our community. Started in World War I and World War II, how the Germans used negative images of propaganda they put out about Jews, pe Jewish people to justify destroying them. And how now the media is doing the same Nazi propaganda to us by propagating and, uh, and actually promoting throughout the earth the negatives of our people throughout the earth. And right now they spearheading it by using the women in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like Sukiana saying all types of nasty and disgusting things. So that now if you take a trip over to Dubai or the Middle East, sister, and you mm -hmm. just want to have a good time, you got these Arabs looking at you like you're nothing mm -hmm. because of her. Right. They're going to think that they can do some debaucherous activity because this is how the women get down in the United States. That's what they think, folks, because that's all they know mm -hmm. based on America's propaganda picking the worst of our us and portraying it to the world. Right. So let me frame it the way you need to understand it so that you don't think that coming in later that this was about talking about women. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What's next, Elder Lawyer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but he that is, but she that is shamefaced it will fear the Lord. But she that is shamefacedness will fear God. Like, listen, I got a higher power. I have a higher power that I must give account to. I don't care what the world thinks. There's a lot of sisters like that, too. I don't care if the world, if people shun me or, or women don't like that I'm a certain type of way. I'm not like you. Mm -hmm. I have God to give account. I'm giving account to my God. I don't care if you like me. I don't care. If I'm not going along with the herd. There's many women like that. And these are the women who succeed in family and all of that. It's not that they don't understand what other women are going through, but they're not going to relate themselves to someone who's going to pull them down. There's many women like that. But the media won't what? Put them on the view. They won't put them on and give them their own show. And they definitely, definitely ain't going to parade them around internationally to show that there's something other than negative women or men. I mean, think about this, folks. Right? Read, read, let's read the last piece and then we'll open up the line to the lawyer. Yes, sir. That, that was it. All right. All right. We're going right in. Again, we're going into the Hebrew and Bible Academy this Sunday, week seven, week seven. Right. And we're going into the roundtable discussion. And in that we have uh, Austin Holloman. From the passport bros, he's going to be coming in. I've already uh, set up the appointment where he'll come in and give his insight to why he decided to leave the country. OK, to search for a family oriented or traditional wo woman. Not that they're not in the United States, but there's a reason why he decided himself to become a passport bro. He's one of the spearheads of this to find something else on the outside of the States. What we're going to ask him in particular is what took him on this journey. Why did he do that? Okay. That's number one. Uh, and that's good that the brother got the passport and he's experiencing other cultures and all that. That's positive. There's nothing wrong with that. But then there's also, there's also people making assertions or opinions on what he's doing without asking him. There's some people saying that he's going out to, to deal with some level of fornication amongst other women. Is that true? What's going on with that? Or are they trying to demonize him about this? What is it? And if he could find a woman in the United States, Right. What would he be looking for? What would have to change in our women to make it where, OK, there is some good women here. All right. And not that he's the all to in all, because there may be some w women who don't like him at all. It has nothing to do with whether or not you like him more so than what what are the conversations out there? Because this passport bro thing. Has blown up, especially after the death 
of Kevin Samuels. Okay, so it's not going to be a thing where it's bashing someone. Well, it's because of, nah, it's about your real life experience. Many men with upward mobility and opportunity who, who, who have something to actually offer are, are, are choosing to leave the country. Right now, eventually, I believe everyone need their passports anyway. <laughs> OK, so that's the positive out of this. In case something blows here in America, you will have an opportunity or options outside of the country. That's my take on it. But all in all, he could have some insight of what these other cultures are within the that he's frequent in comparison to the community he was raised in, under. What are the differences out there? What do you found out out there that you didn't know existed before leaving America? Okay, what is it that we can teach those who didn't have the opportunity to travel? I've traveled. I've seen other cultures. I I see the difference and I know the difference. All right. But I'm not going to just outright. Just put away or do away with the whole demographic. Of my people that we listen, we have we have to save as many people as we can. See, but he's not a Bible teacher, he's not a preacher, so I'm not he's not beholden to that. But his opinion on what he's experiencing. Is warranted, so we're going to talk about that because many is following it and who and, you know, at the end of it, the Bible's open. So Austin, Austin Holloman, get ready. <laughs> Someone asks, who's Austin Holloman? He's the brother. He's he's known. He's been interviewed on a lot of mainstream uh, circulations and and shows uh, throughout the world as the passport bros. There they are a group who is saying that in, in general, that the that that the relationship thing is rigged, especially against black men in the United States. It's rigged. That's what he stated. He says, even if you do get with, with someone that's nice, somehow the system going to come in, come into play to make an in around to destroy a black man with upward mobility. Now, that's his opinion. And he's going to give his opinion on how the politics won't allow him to be like, you know, in a relationship like his father was and his grandfather was. So I believe a lot of what he's dealing with is warranted when it comes to tradition. OK, I'm not here to promote his methods and all that, but I know eventually we're going to have to leave and go into other countries anyway. So I'm going to steer the conversation where it needs to be for a what a healthy medium so that we can want to understand one another. He's a young man. So there's going to be many young women and young men within the dialogue who can be, you know, help through healthy dialogue. OK, so. We're going to talk about that. All right. Someone says, if I had the money, I would travel too." I will. We're going to be doing that, especially in the academy and other scenarios where we're going to be talking about uh, options to break away from the job and how you can actually start your own business business and all that uh, based on the gift the most I've given you. How to have a mind towards upward mobility, not depending on jobs and all that. Uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, within the academy. So hopefully you'll get in and uh, you'll have those discussions with us. All right. All right. So hold tight. We're going to open up the lines. And yes, uh, what a great discussion we had tonight. Now, I just wanted brothers and sisters to understand how propaganda works. It's the demonization before they destroy you. And I believe because of the negative uh, portrayals in the earth against men and women, the children of Israel in this awakening, that white people in Alabama and, Alabama and others feel that they have the moral high ground to jump and to come against our people for no reason at all. See, there's a connection between that where someone thinks that they can just punch a black man in the face in 2023 and jump him, even though they got the royal lion's foot put on their neck. All in all, the brazen disrespect. And <laughs> believing that you can come against our people right now, 
comes from someplace, folks. And it's because of the negative betrayal against us, where if we are portrayed as nothing, people, when they meet up with us, they believe all of us are the same. Okay, so our image, again, is so important. Okay, someone asked a good question. Someone says a good question, A. Sharon Brown. Let me see if I hear her question before open, opening the lines. Let's see. Let me see if I can read her question. Sharon, you can put your question in again. I don't see it. I'll answer it. All right. Someone, man, hey, Elder Lawyer, we had a brother in Alabama. He jumped in the water and swam mm -hmm. to the battle. Now, right. now, <laughs> now uh, you know, while I, while I don't promote violence, the, our weapons, the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal. But no, you just can't be just, that brother was doing his job. You just can't, ain't going to just come and jump, jump him in, with a coward move and jump this brother doing his job. No, what you're going to mm -hmm. do is you're going to stir up the warrior class. Right. Now, the way y'all been doing it have been working, Esau. Your biological warfares and misdiagnosis and all this other stuff to get us indirectly, that been working. But I'm, but I'm using the word and others to talk to our people and hit them to some of those games you've been playing too. But the last thing you want to do is to engage a brother where other people, our people, are present. That's a bad deal. Okay? That's a bad deal. Your indirect attack, attacks on us have been working fine. Stick, to, listen, we don't like it, but you better stick that way. You don't want to impose yourself on us as if you're ready for that. This is, that's why you've done it through science and doing the other ways and your experiments and all that and tricked us into getting your stuff and all that. That's the way you have to do it. But, it, but, but, it, but, but just fist, just, just mono on mono. No, nah, you, no, nah, you're not going to win that one. All right. My brother jumped in the water. I mean, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm. You, 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 hey, you talking about Wakanda, the, 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 the black lion, Hades with the black panther, the black lion. Right. He, he jumped in the water. He, and he started hitting it. He came on the dock. He didn't care whether or not there was something in the water. He came on the dock and, and, and just came from the dock with one hand. In the other hand, Elder Lawyer, it was a two-piece, uppercut body shot. Mm. So, uh, no, we don't 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 do that, Esau. It's not it's not going to fare good for you. Stick with your stick with your your tricks, okay? All right, hold tight. Uh, and they're going to use that too, Elder Lawyer. Believe me, they're going to use that to Absolutely. stoke more racial sentiments. And they're going to use those who, who are emotionally triggered through race to pull this in. The DNC is looking at this as a godsend. We got black people on one side and white people on the other. Vote Democratic. Vote Democrat. You see the racist right. white men are out there, right? And if you're having Trump, these are Trump supporters. I know mm -hmm. how CNN is going to do this thing. Folks, don't fall for it. Okay. All right, we'll be right back with the phone calls. 515-605-9327. We're only going to take calls for 30 minutes tonight, and then after that, we'll wish you all Godspeed. 515-605-9327. All right, one second. Let's see, hold on. All right, 515, if you want to chime in, let me put the phone. Let me put the phone up there one second. The number so you all can see it. Yes. Don't. 
All right, one second here. One second. Oh, one second. Five one five six zero five nine three two seven. Oh, that's why. So chime in, give us your opinion on what's going on out there. Any part of the conversation you would like to uh, chime in with, Elder and I are open to uh, hear that and answer any questions you may have. All right, hold on. All right. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Bear with me. And thank you all for uh, your contributions. I've received a few uh, cash apps in the midst of this, so thank you for that. Uh, dollar sign GLCC144 donate. We really appreciate all the work that you do in supporting us and helping us finish what we have to finish. I have a lot of uploads and a lot of things, content that will really help the body out there. So through your contributions, there's a lot of work we're able to uh, complete. So I really appreciate that. Let's see. Fix the screen. 515-605-9327. All right. Hold tight. We'll be right back with the phone calls. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get the calls going. Let's get the calls going. 515-605-9327. 
chime in. Let's see here. Chime in. And of course, leading into, yeah. Thank you, Elder Ramar. Leaning into our broadcast, I mean, our Academy Roundtable discussion, you know I'm going to end it today with two wrongs. I uh, have to talk about that because there's wrong on either side. There's 50% blame on either side. All right, let's go. 515-605-1111. Nine three two seven. The numbers on your screen. If you like to chime in, Let's see here. Log call in. Yes, there we are. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold, and you will be able to listen to the show. All right. Unmuted. All right. Thank you, Elder Ramar. We're live with the Gather of Christ Church, and I wanted to show you how what propaganda is used. Okay. We can't take for granted or sleep on uh, the magnitude media and propaganda has when it comes to seeking to destroy people. Okay. It was used in World War I, World War II, and it even happened during Desert Storm. All right. Before Desert Storm. Uh, uh, with the, uh, the quote-unquote so-called attacks on the World Trade Center, whatever that was, right? And they used the propaganda against the Middle East to justify going to war. Yellow cake and all these others that they talked about. So, And right now they're using the demonization of our people as a pretext to have the National Guard and others come in to destroy us in these cities. But it started with, that's right, the tongue of the devil's media continually portraying us negatively in the media. And this is why I'm glad we have brothers that's, that are willing to speak up. Jamie Foxx. And I, I love when there's brothers that's like Neil who's willing to stand up. People can say what they want to say about Kanye, but he isn't a coward. He has courage. He's willing to stand up even in the wake of being canceled. Brothers like other, and there's others out there. There's others out there. And, and guess what? It's best to speak for yourself before the media begin to spin stories to destroy you. So I'm glad Neo got in front of that when it came to parenting in a world, uh, in a world of total degradation today where uh, the liberals are promoting children making their own decisions against parents. It's time to get in front of this. 515-605-9327. And uh, we're going to let the phone calls in according to uh, according to the minutes you were on hold. Let's see here. Uh, Zayakwa, Zayakwa, 330 area code. Shalom. Shalom, Elder. How are you? I am blessed by the Almighty. The floor is yours. All praises. I don't know if you remember me. I'm the one that. Y y'all thought it was sunshine. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember you. I remember you trying trying to clone yourself into sunshine. But go on. <laughs> <laughs> the chat Christian me sun. The chat Christian me sunset. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyways, um, I just wanted to come on and say, um, the propaganda that I've noticed with like the media is has become a lot more prominent in like young black women, like or like Israelite women. They don't know the Israel. We know we Israel. Anyway, sorry. Um, but, and I especially noticed it with this new rapper that you showed tonight. I forget what her name was. Sukiana. Something. Sukiana, thank you. Lord have mercy. Um, and I noticed that it, the era of like the rappers that have that type of vibe, they've been changing over like the course of the last like 10, 15 years. Because if you think of like Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, um, Megan Thee Stallion, they have, have all these women that they kind of frame our, like, women and girls to look up to instead of trying to find an example that doesn't objectify them. Mm. Like, 
I say a, a good biblical example would be Deborah for Devorah. So like we, but we fixate so much on, we've learned to fixate so much on what the world has to offer. We don't really think so much about what sisters that were able to come up and be a good example that the Most High has for us. Sister, I'm glad you're bringing that out because they, I'm going to tell you, even the low of, of, certain, of certain communities, uh, let me tell you, there's, there's communities who work to actually protect the image of, of their people, even if they're the base of the community, of, of their particular community. And what, who comes into mind right now, right? Mar Marilyn Monroe is almost looked, at, looked upon as a goddess. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was really a woman who, you know, when the stories are out there, allegedly, she was moving around, you know, you know, you know on, on the on the low level debaucherous scenario, sleeping with different men. But you see how they still mm -hmm. work to make sure that the white woman had a pristine, clean image, even though she was proverbially for today to some degree for the streets. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if if they wanted to portray our sisters, even even the ones like our sister in a positive light, they would find a feel good story. To actually show that this is not all she is, that she have taken on a caricature that they're promoting. But these women don't want their daughters to grow up like this. So if they wanted to find a positive way of even portraying these women, they, they could. They did it for Marilyn Monroe. But 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 mm -hmm. they don't like our but they don't like our sisters. They hate our sisters. And it and it proves mm. and, and what shows that is how they are willing to portray them negatively. What say you? No, yeah, I completely agree. Even if you look back in like that Marilyn Monroe era, you didn't really see like there was our the black sisters were always put into like the role of something less desirable. I mean, if you would think of Gone with the Wind, there was Hattie McDaniel's had they had her portrayed as had as a slave. Yeah. And even and as that goes on on it transitions from like that slave caricature, and then you had a few of like a few of those like those like really good sitcoms that had like that type of good dynamic that would be seen in like a white TV show. But then it started turning into a lot more of that making black women look worse and worse. And I think that's been like a thing since at least the early nineties. And here's a question I have for you and yeah. Oh yeah. They had, hey, they had to get in front of slowing up Lauren Hill almost immediately. You're talking mm. about someone who came at a time bucking the trend against all odds when they were trying to push gangster rap and all that. Man, Lauren Hill was being lauded. I remember when her album came out. She was being lauded by serious, serious geniuses in music such as Stevie Wonder. You don't hear just Stevie Wonder singing anyone's praise. I mm. mean, Lauren Hill was just, I mean, I and I still don't like the way they did Whitney Houston. Okay, yeah, Whitney Houston was struggling with something. But don't let me pull out all the people in your persuasion that went out on all these drugs and all that, but you still kept a clean image of that person. You kept a clean right. image of these people who was on drugs and all that amongst your people because you know because you understood how that reflected on your community. Hell, even Rock Hudson, we didn't know Rock Hudson was gay until he only had a few weeks to live. When they claim he died of Rock AIDS. Rock Hudson was gay? You didn't know Rock Hudson was gay? No, sir. <laughs> they kept that thing under wraps. A heart thrive. 
a heartthrob. All the women love Rock Hudson coming up. And guess what? He was straight out gay, not just gay, Liberace gay. What? He was out there. Oh, yeah. But guess what? They, it's, it's, it's how, what they do with an image. So if they really wanted to show us in a positive light, they would do so. But go on. No, and that, that's not alleged that either. You say that because, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that you say that because they put so much work back in the day to hide sexuality, especially like in certain communities, like you just said with Rock Hudson. Like, I didn't even know he was gay. Yeah. But, and it, and it makes you think how much um, stuff like pride was pushed, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the TV show Pose. It was about like the like this gay ballroom scene in the in New York in like the 80s, and it was all like it was all black and like like the Latino people, and it's crazy to think, think how much they hit it with like in other communities, but in, in like communities like that, it was something that was pushed. Like you you could be like proud of that type of yeah. thing. Yeah, when in other ways you could be like. I didn't see the end of it. Yeah, I just want. Just, I'm gonna place you on hold. Thank you. Your calls are always great. I'm gonna place you on hold. Thank you for for your call. Always okay. great. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, Billy Holiday struggled with things, but they, you know, they they, they kept their image a certain type of way. It was a it was a time of class and you know you don't want someone to have a lasting uh, impression on a person who've contributed so much to society. And this is why they have always worked to make sure they protected the image of those who helped, who helped create our culture to some degree. And I'm gonna tell you, I still believe that Whitney Houston would have had a squeaky clean, clean image in the media at least, because everyone know behind closed doors, she was struggling with something until they put the bulldog on her, Wendy Williams, publicly. And folks, they started doing this stuff when Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown went and baptized themselves in the River Jordan, and they knew they were Israelites. At this time, they was visiting ben I Me, who was over in Israel, in, in Demona, Africa, Israel. And so, no sooner as they proclaimed that they were from the children of Israel and was baptized in the River Jordan over there, no sooner as that happened, they begin the spin machine to now bring out all her dirt, suck Wendy Williams on her, and now made it out that she was just this drug head out of her mind and, and, and sought to soil you her image. A lot of y'all don't know this. A lot of y'all don't understand this. It's something about them attacking us once we realize we're Israel, folks. Because I believe they don't want to answer they, they, they don't want to answer the hard questions. Well, if these people are Israel, then what's up with you? What's up with y'all? Let's, let's at least have the conversation so that we can come on one of court. If we're Israel and you're Israel, why can't we be brothers? Why can't we dialogue publicly? Let's have a CNN dialogue and let's talk about it. OK, because not all Israelites call people devils. Not all Israelites are against other people. Not all Israelites cannot dialogue politically. There are Israelites who are cordial and respectful like Christ was. OK, and we are from his bloodline from the tribe of Judah. We don't hate no people. But there's something about it. They don't want that conversation to be had publicly. For some reason. They don't mind getting on the media, on the news, and talking about all this other stuff, ignoring the 800-pound lion in the room. The real conversation, why you're coming at our people like Whitney and others, because we started to take on and we found out, according to the Bible, that we are the children of Israel. And that doesn't disrespect your religion and what you're dealing with. You have the right to believe what you want to believe, but we know who we are. Let's have the discussion. All right. Nicole has a uh, uh, question. Because now, if we know we're Israelites, now we have to discuss what? Sovereignty. We have to discuss 
politically what this means for our people, how you cannot push negative out there against God's law without giving an account for it. The same way I can't say nothing about you without giving an account for it. Because now we're being recognized as a group under God's law. See, they understand. They understand the range uh, 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 what I would call the range of engagements for what you would call political war. If we identify as Israelites now, we're coming with the law and how we should be treated as a people like they do. <laughs> now, right? Now we can be protected. See, when you use words like, use groups like black or Negro, that doesn't come with any level of protection because there's no laws connected to those people. Those are lost people who are just seeking to be treated equal. See, when you're an Israelite, you realize there's no such thing as equality. When the Babylonian and Assyrians ruled, it was their time. There was no equality. They ruled. Our God gave them rule. Okay? When the Persians ruled, there was no equality. Esau was even uh, within the consuls of the Persians. And they weren't equal to him. He, they were under the Persians, who are the Iranians. When the Greeks ruled, there was no equality. And guess what? When the Romans ruled, there was no equality. And when we rule, our rule is next, and it's an eternal rule, there will be no equality. There's no such thing. You can't have equality when there's a people who was prophesied to rule for a specific time. That's utterly ridiculous. So we're not looking for equality. But as Israelites now, we can now have more control over the laws that pertains to us, and then, then we can have more control over our image. So there's a clear delineation between those who are acting outside of Israel's law and who are, and who are acting within it. And, and, and if we put out there publicly that we're the Israelites and these people are out there being debaucherous, now we can draw a line according to God and say, listen, they're the devil's children. They belong to you. They don't represent us. And then you can't use them to demonize the whole like you're trying to. And this is why, brothers and sisters, they don't want the public conversation through mainstream media. And they're doing everything to censor us speaking here. Eight five six area code. Shalom, I'll pray to the Most High. Uh, I just want to make a um, comment about um, something that happened because you brought up Whitney Houston on Saturday coming home from Sabbath class. So my ride came to pick me up and uh, from the transportation, and the driver, an Esau brother, began to talk about Whitney. And there's a street named after her. And I said, yes, but that's a shame what was done to her and her daughter. And he went on to say, oh, it was the drugs. You know, the drugs. And I don't know what made him think that he was going to be able to have a full-blown conversation with me, not looking like him, and talk about Whitney. I took my phone out, and I said, hey, girl, you got your stuff packed to Tabernacle? And for 40 minutes, I talked about tabernacles, packing clothes. You better get your stuff ready. I wasn't talking to anybody but myself for 40 minutes till he dropped me off. But what was not going to happen, I'm going to sit there and talk to him in a conversation to degrade my sister, whether I knew her or not, with him. I'll tell you this, sister. I wasn't going to sit and talk about her. Sister, I'll tell you this. Dave Chappelle put us down with how they really use, utilize the drug thing to justify, to tie things up so that we don't question their intent to destroy us. We don't question when they come, when, when they do certain things to actually get rid of us. Yeah. Dave Chappelle came in and says, yeah, they come in and they sprinkle little drugs on you and then, you know, and, and then leave. And then they can tie it up by saying, drug overdose, nothing to see here. Yeah. And this is why they got drug dispensaries all over the place, talking about opioid mm -hmm. overdose and all this and all this other stuff out there. So it's a built-in excuse because the only thing our people, I found out, only people, only thing our people need is a built-in excuse so that they don't have to do anything. 
They don't have to look beyond this, beyond anything that's being told if they can have what? A built-in excuse to answer for things we would normally question. That's lazy. Oh, it was a drugs. Oh, oh, it was a drugs, allegedly? Well, what about the night before Whitney Houston died, there was a report that her daughter was in the bathtub. There was reports out there. That wasn't alleged. There was reports out there that her daughter almost mm-hmm. drowned in the bathtub and some of reports out there. Mm-hmm. So what about those reports? Yes, and all of a sudden she just slipped in the bathtub, allegedly, or whatever the case is, and was in the bathtub? And then later her daughter mm-hmm. dies? Mm-hmm. Mysteriously under almost the same circumstance? Yes. The only... I brought it up listen, too. The only person who, who, who was what? Who was the living heir to her royalties as well as her catalog? The only living heir who would, be, who, who, would, who would live and have access to a multi-billion dollar catalog? So that's what's wrong with our people. We're willing to hear the surface. And that's why I titled this what I titled it today, sister. I titled this intentionally yeah. when media is used as the devil's tongue. How yeah. can our people trust the media? When have they ever portrayed or did anything for us, for our people to trust them? They only throw I dirt agree. on our people. They don't even allow us. Mm-hmm. They, don't even, they won't even allow us to honor a gift from heaven who was given to us, mm-hmm. who've given us great music in certain moments when we were dealing with, with, with serious things in our lives. That, let me tell you, when you got people like Whitney Houston and all that, and I'm not going to say I excuse her behaviors and her drug use, or whatever she's dealing with, but you cannot deny when God has sent something. Yes, yes, sir. He sent Sam Cook. Yes, he did. And I'm going to tell you, that's why, even though people get upset with me, that's why I won't go with their story out of nowhere about R. Kelly. I'll never do it Mm -hmm. because the timing of it is suspicious. If you was going to get him, if he did anything, it was all lined up for you to do it years ago. And you wait until he you, you wait until he's looking at his catalog and saying, I want my money for all the for a documentary to pop up from somewhere. And then charge him, not on child rape, but you're charging him on a RICO charge? <laughs> because of something between <laughs> uh, state lines? I'm like, that's why I don't listen to what they're saying. Because our people only need a built-in <laughs> excuse. Oh, yeah, those girls. What girls? What are you talking about? Did you actually read the transcripts? You know how many t- why do you think they didn't film this live so that people can see it like the OJ trial? Why did they only show composites of drawings so that the media can spin what was going on at the trial? Mm-hmm. So I'm not here as an advocate for R. Kelly. What I'm saying is, why do we just run with the story they give us, realizing that and we, and all of us have to realize that there, there have never been any people in the media we could trust. Why trust them when it's, con- when it's convenient? Thank you, sister. You have yeah. the last word. No, I'll pray to the yeah, most yeah, high. Sister, sister, one sister uh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one more thing. And ain't that amazing? Yes, ain't that amazing? That it you is. Can, it's amazing it that you can, you, can, you, you can take down a man on a, you can take down a person on a one-man Rico. Yeah. Well, I thank the most high for the Holy Spirit because I shut him down immediately. Oh, I grabbed my phone out immediately and didn't let him get one word in. For 40 minutes, he was trying to still have a conversation, and I kept talking to myself with my phone to my ear. But one other thing I heard you say about two weeks ago on yeah. um, uh, one of the Sabbath lessons, you had mentioned that you hadn't met a rabbi that didn't deny the, uh, the most high's name, Ahaya Shor Ahaya. I was in Wawa. And I saw an old friend from an old church, and he asked how I was doing. And, you know, we always say what we hear you say, blessed by the best, and his name is Ahaya. And I said, Ahaya, Ahaya, Ahaya. And, and Esau, Jewish, 
rabbi turned around, whom I didn't know, know him. He said, I'm a Jewish rabbi. You're absolutely correct. And I said, then why don't you tell your people? And he shut up. Look at that. Look at that. Confirming. So I'm a, just a witness to what you said. Uh, I think it was about two Sabbaths ago. All praises. So, <laughs> it's yeah. been verified. This is Kazaya from the New Jersey body. And thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, sister, for calling in. I bless you. Oh, yeah. I by the, you, by the way, um, I went today to get me a little soup and I was on my way home. And and Chingy, Chingy showed up on my feed. Now, in particular, I respect Chingy. I, I spoke to Chingy before, right there. <laughs> because while I was overseas, Chingy asked me, was it okay for him to use one of my teachings I did online or on the streets in one of his videos, right? Uh, and the video was called King Judah. I'm going to pull it up here. Pull it up here. Let me tell you, our, our people, more people know than you, any of you can realize, folks. They, they, believe me, this conversation is being had in many high-level circles. And I'm talking about high-level circles amongst our people. All right? There was a song called King Judah. Right? Chingy. Nine years ago. Right? Let me pull it up so you all can see it. Right? Let me pull it up so you can see it. Right? King Judah. Check it out. Just a little bit of it. Now, Chingy called me up, and he said, yeah, you know, he got a song, and he would like uh, my permission so that I'm speaking in the back of it to actually do the song. Uh, does he mind if I... Uh, If the uh, one second, let me put it here. Would he mind if my voice was used? And I said, brother, I'll be on it. Have no problem with it. Right. That's why we're here. We got other things to do. But brothers and sisters, y'all better listen. Your God that put you in this is calling that. He's telling you it's time. And they know it's time. They know it. Before I say this verse, all praises to the most high. most high. Sitting on the throne, Chingy the king, what I go by. Judah. Jumped off the slave ship to a spaceship, boy, I'm so fly. So fly. Cut your triangle out with my short mind, that's no eye. You in the kitchen cooking up, go. trying to bake a pie. Go. I'm reading about my past deception, go. trying to cremate a lie. Get Guess it. I should talk about yeah. bottles, girls, the hood, and guns. Get I've gotten sicker that you son of sin, I'm God's son. So up your number one. See that? Yeah. Nine years ago. So this stuff been circulating a long time. A lot of us understand we Israel. But in particular, what came on my feed with Chingy was he's in, he, he has an interview on Vlad TV, folks. Now, mind you, it came out that the quote-unquote uh, transgender person that smeared Chingy's career, that person came out and said that, that they lied on Chingy, that they never even dealt with him. And that was a lie. He, that person, that man, just took a picture with Chingy. But then he, at first he said he did something, but then he came out later and lied. I mean, told the truth and said, yeah, I made it up. Not allegedly. It was online. And Chingy lost his career because there was rumors he was dealing with out there transgender. You can't do that and have cred amongst the hip hop, the hip hop circle. And no one, even though the person came out and said they lied, there was no apology from the media, nothing. And the brother had to suffer being lied on. King Judah, anyone? And I'm saying that to say this. He just got interviewed on Vlad TV. And there was a question that came up concerning 
what is his take on R. Kelly? He said, listen, I've been in many scenarios with R. Kelly, and I've never seen what they're talking about. Okay. I've never seen what they're talking about. He says, I'm not going to say it didn't happen, but I've never seen what they're talking about. That's number one. Number two, this is what he said in particular. He says, I'm not going to talk about R. Kelly. Let me use myself as an example. I'm a grown man. Hit song out, popular, traveling on tour. I go to my hotel room. I go to the, to the elevator. And parents, uh, that means father and mother, stops the elevator and take their young daughter and say, you're going upstairs with Chingy. And Chingy said, no, she's not. No, she's not. Go to Vlad TV. He says, if you understand what happens in this business, He says, he says, if you understand how many 16, 17 year old girls come to our concerts, come backstage VIP with identification, claiming they're 26, 27 years old. He says, so I'm not going to speak on no R. Kelly and what the media is saying. And this is what he said. This is about R. Kelly's catalog. He says, I'm not going to talk about what R. Kelly went through. But parents have pushed their daughters, underage daughters, on me. On Vlad TV. Go check it out. He says, but they, they put it in the bag and they use this stuff when it's convenient, when they want to take something from our people. Quote, unquote. Anyway. Next call. But no one talks about Woody Allen. The little Asian girl that we thought was his adopted daughter. Uh -huh. Uh, Nicola has a comment or question. Greetings, Shalom. Elder. Shalom, how are you? Uh, um, all is well. I'm so delighted to hear from um, to talk to you. I tell you, I am. Um, I'm going to start out with the question. Um, are y'all still in, uh, getting the church in Memphis in the works? Because I'm telling you, this town is desperate for truth. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a Memphis, uh, Tennessee congregation very soon. Just hold tight. I'll tell you this. You have my word that before, yeah. we, before the winter time comes in, we will have a church in Memphis, Tennessee. Don't worry about that. We have it. We're going we're gonna to do it for you. Oh, that's good. All right. That's good news. That's what I've been. That's good news. Now, yeah. I do want to add to the to the, content, uh, the conversation. Um, you, it, it's so much has been said, and a lot of things have been triggered. Um, just listening to you um, talk to other people on on other people on the phone. But I, uh, were were you aware of this um, Sukiana uh, who um, twerked it, uh, twerked in her video on a on a ten year old boy? Sister, let me tell you. I, after what I heard, because you know, sometimes you go online and people are talking about something. The first time I've ever heard of mm -hmm. this Sukiana young lady was when they showed that London thing, when she talking about what she want to do tonight. Oh, and okay. I don't even want to see anything. And you want to, and she did this on a 10 year old. It's like, am I surprised? Yeah. And why is it that, no. and now sister, let me ask you, if a grown man would have been doing that and there's a 10-year-old girl, what would have happened? That's what I'm saying. The selective outrage amongst in our community is unbelievable because, it, like you said, it just would have been, it had to been the reverse. She, it would have been uh, abuse and let, pedophilia. Okay, let me ask of, you this, sister. Here's, here's another question. Was there a public outcry? amongst no, the women against this. That's exactly what I'm saying. We women have to step up because, but we are so, we are so in, uh, just so messed up. Uh, uh, I, I'm always advocating for 
uh, you know, our women to really return to the laws of God because yeah. we're so out, we're so whack and out of place. I mean, even the whole Barbie campaign for that movie, I don't understand why I saw people on my Facebook feed talk, go, you know, having gone grown women, women over 50, went to see the movie and talking about how good it was. And I got bit by the Barbie bug. And, you know, and, you know, Barbie was, a, to me, I, you know, even before I came into the truth, I recognized that she was used as a, a, a white supremacist, uh, you know, just a doll. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it seemed harmless because she was a doll. But her image that she, you know, the standard of beauty that she, and the covetousness that and and the independent spirit that Barbie had it represented how it how it was damaging to you know just you know to us as, as black girls who wanted to be her and wanted to have her car and wanted to have her life and her careers and all those kind of things and you would think that some of the women who are supposed to have you know many of them have PhDs and think that they are so smart and we've come so far and how they just just got completely wrapped up in the whole Barbie movie um the whole Barbie movie campaign and it's it, it just it baffles me sometimes how lost we are but I know that this is prophetic but at the same time you know, you, you really try to get out in front of it to try and say, hey, sister, do you recognize that you, you know, that you, these are, they, you're, you're envying your oppressor. You know, why are you, mm. why are you uh, singing the praises of this doll that represents white supremacy in this country? And, Good you know, point. you see the NeNe Leaks and, and even Mary J. Blige, you know, wearing all this blonde, long hair now and, and, you know, it's like they, it's just unbelievable what we see, but it's the selective outrage that really gets me because women, black women are just up beyond reproach. You can't, you know, you can't tell them anything. You can't tell them they're wrong. And, they, you know, they they don't ever take any accountability or responsibility for their own, for their own actions. It's always somebody else's fault. And you can you better not ever say anything against them because it's like the holy grail. You can black like women, you know, the thing that, you know, especially if she's a single mother, you know, you don't touch that. And our community is is upside down. And I just you know, I've just really wanted to know kind of what your take was on about the whole Barbie campaign thing. I would just kinda of love to hear that because they even put a pink suit on on, on the image of Martin Luther King. I don't even know if you saw that. He had a Barbie suit on. They, I mean, just things that they do to our community that they don't do to other communities. Because, you know, somebody, uh, a revered uh, dead leader uh, in other communities would never put a pink Barbie suit on, on the image of Martin Luther uh, you know, of their revered leaders like they did with Dr. King. And, and you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just so, it's high time for the truth um, to be, um, you know, to get out there so yeah. that people can be able to just stand back with an objective eye and realize what the elite is doing to, you know, propagandize and, and really to really grab the whole of our children, to make them soft, to make, to really get them out from under us. You know, it started when they made, you know, when they had it where women had to work and and get them away from their children at home. And we have got to figure out a way to be able to maintain, you know, what, what, whatever good thing that we have left in our community and pull it together so that we can, uh, we won't be consumed by the wrath of God, by the judgment of God that is on, obviously on this country now. And yeah. I just, uh, I'm just kind of curious about your take on the whole Barbie thing. It's just, it, it was just, it was so huge, and I didn't even see it coming. Not the way I did. I was just thinking these. I, we were so enlightened. We we certainly wouldn't have fool, fallen for that. But it just goes to show you just how messed up we are as a people. Yeah, and I haven't seen it. I've been looking into it, but just back in the day, like growing up, I knew something was wrong with this ba this Barbie fascination. She, uh, it's 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 more so she had mm. become an idol. She, she's an idol. I believe that yeah. there's, yeah, when, when, when you do the research on things, I believe there's spirits that are prayed behind a lot of these products uh, mm. that they are giving out to our people. It's deep. And you bring them into our homes, you think it's a dial, but you don't know the witchcraft that come from those sorcerers. Uh, 
who are over the products. Mm. Any, any two times they'll sit yeah. and pray at Sony Music over your mm. over their masters of songs before releasing mm. them to radio stations. Wow. There must be something to their conjurers and witchcraft into the music as well mm. as their products. So all in all, it's an image. It's that mirror, mm -hmm. mirror on the wall pathology that for some reason, mm. our people living vicariously, you know, through the idol. Yeah. They look I in the, uh, because, because you said Mary J. <laughs> Blige and others, I'll tell you, with the blonde hair, you'll be surprised who they see in the mirror. They probably think that mm. that's, they think they are the woman they're making themselves to be. So this is witchcraft. Yeah, this is magic on a high level. To us, it looks, it looks yeah. it, to men, to me, it looks insane. But all in all, it is. I can't, it, listen, but what you is. can't downplay, sister, is the magic. Especially the when magic. you're overtaken yes. by, through the spell. Mirror, mirror on the wall. You're sitting there looking in the mirror. Yeah. And guess what? You may be black, you may be black as I am, and they see Barbie in the mirror. Mm-hmm. That's it because it's like an it's like a spell because it's like why would yeah. you think you um, fur on your eyes you know these these eyelashes yeah. why would you think that the fur on your eyelashes is attractive it's like you have such a warped sense of what even is attractive let alone what is righteous well sister just, it's it's just baffling sister it's 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 we're overtaken and this is why it's time to bring mm -hmm. our people back I mean it's. It's not the brow beat them or whatever the case is, but let me tell you, when you suffer and have been destroyed as a people as such like we have, I mean, our mm -hmm. people would rather deal with an, alt, an alternate ego than to actually ego, than to accept the reality, mm -hmm. the reality yes. of what the hopeless reality that comes with accepting yes. where we are without direction. So I'm not making an excuse That's for it. it, but sometimes people just create something else due to uh, yeah. the self-hatred. It's, it's a psychological it's, effect. And, yeah. yeah, because you don't see no progression in yourself because the world won't allow you to after being beat down. So it's an alter ego. Right. 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 So, and then no hope. And, and, if and, you have and, no hope. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, you can check it out. You can, you can, you can, you can see, you can see the personality of a person before they put all the stuff on and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then see the confidence and, and the, mm. that, that they have after they put the stuff on. And I think the confidence yeah, like is, Beyonce said, yeah. Uh, when she put, when she gets ready to go on stage with Sasha Fierce. Yeah, but let me tell you. Another person let called. me tell you. Yeah. The confidence of, 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 of loving who you are is really what, what a man draws to. It ain't the other stuff. A woman don't understand how their yeah. confidence change when they put that on. And they believe them putting it on is why men are attracted to them. When they should show right. that same confidence before or all of mm. that. So it confused women. They say, well, the women use men, but listen, you throw your head back, you stand up. You, I mean, I mean, your posture is straighter. You walk with more confidence yeah. and all of that is more so the attractive piece because you've become a different personality. Mm -hmm. You didn't feel that confident. Yeah. That's, and that's what showed before the Barbie and the makeup and yeah. all that others. Right. So we're going to talk about that this Sunday. Right. We're going to talk about a little bit of that. Yeah. It's just a little bit of that. Just go into it. Well, the, aca the academy, Listen. the academy has been off the chain. Yeah. Elder. I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, sister. I, we do a I've lot of work. I've been waiting for this lesson. Well, sister, we're going to come together. We're going to talk about it. And it's really, you know, it's, I, I believe sisters, if they if if they're told exactly how men think without men bashing them or or coming against them and 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 and, and downing them according to how they feel how they think they're being down if, if they just hear what men mm -hmm. think and i think that would yeah. go a long way with women 
because I think I women, think so too. Women, I think we women can really does, they do together. Yes, yeah, we. They do a lot to try to please, really to try to please and be accepted by men. And that's understandably so. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to, right? So now I think right. we can have a conversation where sisters can actually hear the truth from men. Yeah. Without without mm -hmm. without them being the the pinata, being attacked, right? And then we can hear the truth on from the woman's side. Without yeah, being them yeah. attacking men, right? So it's going to be a good conversation. Thank you, and thank you for for your for your part in the academy. It's going to be a good one this weekend. Oh, absolutely! All right. Thank you, Elder. You're Shalom. welcome. Shalom. Thank you. All right, I was, I was supposed to have been out of here. I could take a few more calls. Chris has a comment. Shalom, Elder. Shalom, Chris. How are you? All right, pretty good. Uh, yeah, um, like it's like what you're saying, you know, and hopefully, um, yeah, sisters, like if we could uh, tell you guys that you're beautiful without that stuff, that'd be awesome. But I was gonna say, elder, yeah, it's it's like you were saying, um, this the most high, a higher, he is definitely pouring his spirit down on on the children of Israel and even our Gentile uh, brethren and and um um outside, you know, um, yeah, elder. Uh, it's one scripture, Acts two and seventeen, uh, through, uh, and I'm, I may not read, I'm not gonna read it, but uh, uh, Acts two seventeen through uh, twenty one. I, I, I suggest um, all uh, you know family go ahead and read it. It actually talks about how the Most High is gonna pour His Spirit out on Israel and wake the wake the uh, the people up, and and that's what happened with Chinky, that's what happened with uh, Neo, and that's what happened with um, Jamie Fox. The Most High, the Holy Spirit is moving, and we have the greatest leadership to bring forth uh, Christ's doctrine and the Most High name. So I'd like to commend you, elders, and, and thanks again for your guys' work. Well, thank you, brother. And guess what? I'm going to tell you this. Uh, we, can't, we can't downplay what happens to a man like Jamie Foxx, who went through a life-changing, almost death experience. Who knows what Jamie Foxx seen in between the time that he was down, induced coma, and went through that sickness in the hospital? Right? And one day we may hear that experience to why, if the opportunity afforded itself, he would come back and just say what he couldn't say before. Let me tell you, when your mortality is tested, right, the cares of this world and how you view the world changes. And I believe Jamie Foxx, going through that ordeal, he came back a different person and said, and he thought in his mind, I could have died without having a say. Everything I'm saying, yes, what I'm dealing with would have just died with me. And if there's an opportunity to live and speak to evil and stand for truth, I'm going to do so. I truly believe he dealt with that. Don't forget, I go to Tennessee, 2000, I think it's 2015, where Brother Azariah was on his deathbed. I flew into Tennessee, brother. I flew into Tennessee. Listen to me. Azariah was a producer for this same show we're on. The news uh, yeah. intro that you see on the Hebrew Bible Academy was done by Azariah. The doctor called me on the call. I was on the phone at the airport, and they said he had two hours to live, his brother, and said if you, you have to get to him, you have to get to him now. You have two hours to live. And I said, brother, we don't determine. The doctors can't determine when someone dies. You tell, him to, you tell the doctor to hold on until I get there. Brother, mm. I, I leave the airport, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Listen to me and listen to me good. I couldn't find a cab nowhere. And out of nowhere, a brother asks, hey, brother, uh, do you need a ride? I get in the car with the brother. He's taking me to the hospital. I told him I have to go to the hospital. And I start talking a little bit. And the brother pulls over the road. 
I never met this brother from nowhere. And he looked at me again. This brother just asked me that I need a ride to the hospital. There was no, I, listen, there was no cabs or nothing out there. Mm. He asked me, do you need a ride? He pulled over and he looked at me. He says, are you Elder Ricard Shiar? <laughs> I can't believe Elder Ricard Shiar is in my car. Brother, mm. you know how long I've been looking at? I'm like, brother, I have to get to the hospital. There's a brother on mm -hmm. his deathbed. He drives me to the hospital. The doctor looks at me and says that the brother only got a few hours. I can say what I have to say. His brother is, this brother can testify to this, my brother, if he was a call on. Mm -hmm. I go into the hospital room and see the brother after the operation under a, an induced coma. And I looked at the family and I said, is he in a coma or is this an induced coma? I said, wake him up. I said, no, if he's going to die anyway and only have two hours, mm -hmm. let him talk. It's like, well, the pain. I'm like, listen, brother. Take the stuff off of him. Azariah woke up. He looked me straight in the eyes and smiled and said, Elder, <laughs> listen, Elder, I knew you was going to be on this side. I told him I wanted mm -hmm. to come back. I told him to let me go back. I'm not finished yet. And they let me back. Wow. And he says, Elder, everything you wow. taught, everything you taught, when it comes to what happens on this side is real. And I want to go on the radio show and tell everyone it's real. I was over there. I was there and I wouldn't go all the way in and I waited and waited. And when I woke up, you were looking at me. Can you anoint me? Wow. He asked me for the anointment and he says, elder, I need someone to stay with me because they do weird things to me at night. 24 hours and shifts to make sure he was never alone. He lived for five months when they told me he would have two hours. Mm. Up looking at the game, eating ribs, beef ribs, all of that. So when I hear what's going on with Jamie Foxx, a part of them that was never stated before, it's because something happened to him when he was down. Mm. Something happened to him. He connected with something higher than all of us, I'm telling you. And when he came back, if you have an opportunity with a voice to say something, you better say it while you still have breath. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Alex. Wow. Bless you. All right. Trish has a comment and or question. Shalom, Elder. How are you this evening? I'm blessed by the best. And his name is Ahaya. How are you? Yes, sir. The same here. Blessed by the best. And his name is Ahaya. Um, I just wanted to comment on, you know, what you were talking about as far as, you know, image and everything concerning our women you know, it's crazy to me that it went from, like, the Queen Latifahs and the Sister Soldiers to, you know, and it manifested into now the, you know, and Little Kim, it went to, you know, in the 90s, Little Kim and Foxy Brown, and it just got worse as the female rap trend progressed, mm -hmm. you know, into the Cardi B's and the Sukiyamas. Um it's really sad to see that our, that our sisters are embracing this negative culture. You know, this demonic culture is really what it is. And I truly believe that, like, no respect for, you know, us not having any respect for ourselves and in turn not having any respect for our men is it equals to no respect for Ahia because he created man. He created our men and in his image. And if we don't 
respect them, how can we respect him? How can you say you love the most high if you don't love and respect the men that are around you that he put here to protect you and, you know, and love and care for you in the first place? <clears throat> um, I was I was raised in a family with, you know, my grandparents, my mom and dad, you know, thank God my parents are still living. They're not together any longer, but it's, it's truly, you know, just a sad situation to see that we've lost so much respect for ourselves and our men, you know, mm. um, it's, it's not, it's not this, you know, this isn't the world I was expecting it to be. And, you know, I get it now that I've been, you know, the last couple years that I've been, a, you know, a part of GOCC and watching and learning so much that I didn't know, you know, it's changed me as a woman, you know, okay. personally, just how I think and how I react and how I deal with men in general. It's, it's it's a game changer, you know, and I, I pray for my sisters that we, you know, that we come that we come back to a higher and realize that, you know, this is really the 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 laws and commandments and the word is what we need to, you know, to build ourselves back up, to be the strong women that we proclaim to be so we can continue to get married and have husbands and multiply and be fruitful. And, you know, we don't, we, we, we're nothing without our men. And I don't understand why so many of us feel like the whole independent woman route is the way to go. Because in the end, when this all comes down to it, we're going to need them. We're, we're going to need you guys, period, point blank, you know, and if we push you guys away, then it'll be, you know, it'll be more, more of the no accountability thing. Oh, well, nobody's here to protect me. Nobody's here to help me, blah, 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 blah. Well, if, you know, you just said that men wasn't about nothing and, and they couldn't do nothing for you, but now all of a sudden, you know, martial law starts and they kick it in your door, what you going to do? Mm. That's deep. That's deep. The devil you have played, know, let me tell you, sister, the devil have played a trick on all of us. And it's like this. It's, it, yes, it, sir. it really comes down to the name of Israel. Psalms 83, which yes. says, let us all conspire that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. If we don't begin right. to take on the name of our fathers, to build legacy and a mm -hmm. name. See, and this is why the yeah. table of nations and the scriptures are so true. Hence the reason why they tried to homogenize and to dilute our people here in America. Because think about it, at a time mm -hmm. where they're talking about, where they, they're going to be forced to have to give reparations eventually. I don't right. think they'll do it, but that's the only political saving grace that the Democrat Party could have if they said, listen, before the election, before the election, reparations is going to break down. Mm -hmm. We're going to give it to you. But mm -hmm. not afterwards. You can't deal with no promises of what they're going to do afterwards anymore. Before. Now, right. the reason right. why the dilution of our name and men and women not getting together, having a family name like traditionally like it was when my family and great-grandmother and fathers were getting married and all that, is because now okay. it's going to be harder for those who who are qualified for reparations to actually state claim to it if, if the families are all fractured. Mm -hmm. If there's mm -hmm. no family name to attach to the money to, to the people who actually build the land by men and women taking right. on a family name which develops a tree linking directly to slavery, how can now mm -hmm. you state claim to the works of your forefathers that built the country? So it's strategic how they did this at a time where they knew it. They tried to kick this can down the road long enough until our people began to ask for what Martin Luther King said he was going to get before he, mm -hmm. re he received a bullet. 
the last they right. want us to deal with that dream part of Martin Luther King. That didn't, Martin Luther King wasn't on no dream. He said that that, that whole thing, yeah. he's not even on that no more. He said that America going to have to cut, cut a check because it didn't cost them mm -hmm. anything to allow us to vote. That didn't cost them anything. Right. They didn't cost them anything for them to acknowledge that, 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 that there was inequality. So the whole thing right. is they knew we would eventually get back around to where Martin Luther King was and say, listen, that's, that's like, like our God said in Egypt, I mean, I told Moses, break off what you have, Egyptians, and give it to these people who made this country rich. So they knew our people would mm -hmm. eventually, if we're the Israelites and come into the Bible, eventually we'll come to a financial solution that's biblical. So reparations right. is deep in of itself, but I'll tell you this, they sought to dilute it by dividing man and woman so that no one can state claim mm -hmm. because what? Yeah. If there's no marriages, then there's no claim to the name of people who built the country. So That's I'm, right. Hey, we're going to talk about that again this Sunday. I mean, I can't wait to Sunday. I wish today was Sunday, <laughs> but we're going to have those discussions because e right. economics, all of this is a part of it. And if they can divide us and we yes, can have sir. children without a family name, then we can't state claim to anything from the past. Let's cut them off from being a nation right. that the name of Israel be no more in, in existence. We even lost the names of our yeah. forefathers who came over here in chattel slavery because we, what? We no longer marry to keep family names intact. So I'm going to talk about keep that also. Names. Thank you, sister. And uh, before I, uh, can I, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Are baptism classes still going on? And how do you join? Because I've been trying to get that information for a minute. Okay, where are you? I'm in Colorado. Okay. Did I take your number before? And we, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, will you guys be coming anywhere close to Colorado on the tour? Yeah, we'll I be, know there's some GLCC people here. Yeah, we'll be coming to Colorado, and it's time to step Colorado up. So don't worry about it. I have some plans for that soon. I, I do it. have your number. I'm going to take it down again. And uh, Yes, sir. Let, you know, let, 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 let's, let's, let's get this thing going, sister. You can become a part All of the right. body, Trish. Good to me. Yes. All right, let me take. Yes, hold I'm on. I'm excited. Okay, welcome to the fold. We we need strong people just like you, brothers and sisters in this word. So I'm gonna take your number, Trish. Here. Okay. Okay, I yes. have your number. Yes. We'll give you a call. Okay. Okay, Salvada. I appreciate you, uh, Elder. You have a good evening. All right, the Wada Shalawa. Yes, sir. Okay, I don't have time for many phone calls, so I'll open this up again. I'll take a few more, but I have to open it up again uh, this coming Friday for Patreon, if y'all don't mind. I know there's a lot. We're going to pick up on this same conversation and more because I want to go into the healthcare field that uh, a lawyer sent me a clip that's, <laughs> I mean, it's surreal. Everything we were talking about, healing through through science, if the stuff is in you, if it's already in your bloodstream, is an actuality. Healing because you have some stuff into, in you already. Virtual healing through the modern day healthcare system. Hey, wait till you see, hear about this, this coming Fridays. But we'll, st we'll still be able to take some of these calls uh, if, if, if I don't get to you this evening, okay? Uh, let's have... Uh, D then Daryl. D then Daryl. D. Hi, can you hear me, Elder? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Shalom. Shalom. This is D from the uh, Los Angeles body. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you this evening, and Thank I just you. wanted to make a comment since we were talking about Miss Sukiana. Okay. So I don't know if you you know, like four years ago, she was there's uh, videos on Instagram circulating. I'm not Instagram or probably Instagram, too, but YouTube where she was crying and admitting that she signed a contract with the record label and that she sold her her soul to the devil. And so she put that out there four years ago. And mm. then all of a sudden, like she just start blowing up. So she went away, then she's now blowing up. And it, you're right. 
why why do they they promote all the debaucherous type artists and it seems like all the female rappers are on the same stuff they only talk about what they can do to men their private parts and um they they j- dress like prostitutes and um it's just it's just such a horrible example of of our women yeah i just want to make that comment see but See, but the common thread that I wanted to tie here is the fact that we don't even understand the impact it's going to have on all of our people as a whole when it comes to how the international bodies and military will engage us. Mm, mm, See, mm, if mm. we don't, if we're not portrayed as a people uh, who deserve to, to have any care or, or, <laughs> or to be saved at all, if we are being promoted as less than, then 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 I believe the armies are going to come in with the mindset to destroy first. And this happened right. to us, you know, this happened to us before in Jerusalem, where the negative gets out and now they come in without asking questions, painting all of our sisters in this light. And next thing you know, don't forget these Middle Easterns from B- Dubai and all that, how they're flying sisters out over there. When they come into the country and become immigrants and l- cutting loose in the United States during a time of martial law, they're going to be they're going to be doing all types of things to our sister because this is what they believe our sisters like. It's going to be it's going to be all out war. Selling, I know. And why are these artists like so quick to sell out? I mean, whether you know, even from down to LeBron James's son and, you know, even Jamie Foxx, you spoke of him not speaking out about what really happened to them and yeah. what probably caused this. Um, but I, I digress on that. I don't want to go there because we saved listen, that conversation listen, for Fridays. <laughs> we're going to save it for Friday, but I think it's time to come wholesale politically since that's what they understand and say, listen, we're the children of Israel. You are, you are intentionally portraying us in a negative light. And it's time to sue some of these record companies and, the, and these sub corporations for straight out, straight out media, ra- straight racism. It's demonization. It's defamation. And it's an industrialized defamation. And it's time to sue these companies. And say no. Nah. And that's all they promote. If that's you, all if, they promote. If sign, I, I can't. Listen, if you sign these artists to portray our image in a negative light, you should right. be sued. I believe our people need to come together and say, listen, we're not black, we're not Negro, we're Israelites, which comes with an image to be protected. And through that image, I don't care what debaucherous people you find. You go through us to have someone to portray us media wise. You have to come through right. us. To get and they promote correct, that. They but they, you know they a, just continuously yeah. promote it. Yeah, to get a correct representative. There's many listen, there's many men and women who can who can represent us on an international level positively. Just like we have to go and to our the, people just so exactly, quick exactly. to sell us out. So no, you can't do and an end is, around and go find the base of our community to to portray all of us in a negative light. It's defamation. It it's, is. It's, and then even yeah. like that little, little Uzi Vert, the Lucifer, if you say his yeah. name, little Uzi Vert, it's Lucifer. And all they're just they're pushing like Doja Cat, all of them, the satanic, yeah. you know, Satanism. Um, and you've talked about Lil Nas X and, yeah. and, it, and it's just so yeah. it's, it's, it's gone way past. Yeah. Um, just you know, listen, pushing an agenda. Listen, just like they got homophobia, anti-Semitism and all these other words out there. Right, that that can mm-hmm. protect these people politically. Ooh. They're gonna have to find something for us. Mm-hmm. You're right. They have and to we, find something. Call out it all is, of our brothers and sisters yeah, that are online yeah. right now. We should come up with a word that describes what they're doing to us by putting these people on a pedestal to promote to our children and to the next generation. Because I see her, and I'm like, man, we we should have put the brakes on Little Kim back in the '90s. Because now yeah. in 2023, here's here's Sukiana. 
Yeah. I mean, and she's pushed every envelope. Like, she's trying to go past. It seems like every one of them just get worse and worse and worse. And it's like, when will it stop? Listen, and why are we? St why are some of our young people supporting this? Sister, you have to realize, I don't know if you were here earlier, but there's always a... I was. There's always a base element within any society. Mm. If anyone That's is right. asking us... To, to quell any level of negative or debaucherous behavior within our community, that will never happen. So the question is not whether, it is, whether or not it's happening. Why are they seeking out that to promote us throughout the earth? That's the problem. And, and, and because, our, because and, why? And Judah in particular. Listen, listen, because why? As long as there, there's an opportunity for repentance, even though they're the base, mm -hmm. they can change their lives. They, do you think Sukiani mm -hmm. is not going to regret down the line what she did when her children see her see this this garbage 10, 15 years from now? So the whole thing is, it's 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 upon mm -hmm. us to stand in front of this and say, no, you can't choose the base within our society because I'm not trying to find the, the drug out, uh debaucherous prostitutes amongst your community to push them publicly as an example for you. So that's the whole deal. Yeah. So it's yeah, and I and so, so before listen, I got this current listen, job. Listen, oh, listen, go ahead. Listen I'm sorry. What I'm saying, finish sister. With Christ, Christ show forth a level of repentance for those who are in sin. So there's an opportunity for all of these people to repent. So that's where the Bible yeah. comes in. That's where we come in to try to help them change their lives. When the devil is doing an end around, instead of instead of changing their lives, they're moving. They're moving from around those who would protect these people who are hurt and put and placing mm -hmm. these people as an example of what our people are within these communities. At the same time, our people have come to the truth that we're Israelites. There's no coincidence in this. So all in all, it's not about getting everyone on one accord because that'll never happen. It's about standing up and saying, you know what? You have to go through us to get to get to them. You're not you, you're no longer going to use them to misrepresent us because these people are hurting. If you want, yeah. if you want a representative from us, we can show you good men, good women, family people that can be our representative like you do with China, like you do with the Arabs, like you do with the East, East Indians. But we're not going to allow you to continue to, to degrade us by giving contracts to the base of our people who are who are hurting. And it's time that our people right, start in her standing. Video, and and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, in her video, she said that she she was trying to sign this contract and everything, too, for her children and to get out the hood, you know? And yeah. they do target people who are hurting, who who are um, po impoverished. Yeah. And, and here they go. You, yeah. So it's time, like, like you seen that, listen, you seen when that, that thing popped off in Alabama and that brother jumped in the water and swam to the shore to, to, to actually to defend <laughs> his people. Yeah. Who was getting beat down, who was actually getting jumped by a bunch of cowards. Yeah. Well, listen, and then we, they tried to drag well, Marlon listen, Wayne. I, I, listen, I don't want to go for, too far into that, but what I want to say is, yeah, there's some political fighting that need to be done on the forefront to stop these same devils who using the media to demonize us and get in front of that and see what legal recourse that we can take because they don't understand anything unless you deal with them on a level they understand. Right. We, we used to have people like, and, listen, we used to have people like, I got I to gotta go, sister. I got to go. Let me, place, right. let, me, let me put you on hold. We used to have people. Thank you. You're welcome. We used to have people like Reverend Al Sharpton and others who would stand up understanding what? Knowing the political demonization and how that can affect our community and do what? Fight against it politically. But he sold out to the media. He's a Democrat shield now. He's nothing but a puppet being utilized as an enemy against his own people. So here it is. Here it is now. Let me break down this real quick before, before, before I take the next call and then we have to go and I'll open up calls next week. We have no, we have no one to represent us. 
Jewish people got Jewish people have the ADL, the JDL. They have anything. If you if if it sounds like you, you're framing something that could that could demonize them or have them viewed in a negative light, it stopped before it started. Okay? So something is going on. When I say something is going on, they are, they are meticulously coming into our communities, finding the base of our communities, and promoting what? Promoting the evil and debauchery that's within every community in this earth. They've tainted the whole earth. Anything negative you can find in our community, you can find in theirs. So it's time for our people to say, you know what? Not only will I not listen to that music or represent it or, 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 or support it in any fashion, we're going to have to talk. You people have to start going after the corporations who, who's incentivizing this negative image against our people. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take our people saying, not only are we not going to listen to this crap anymore, we're not going to allow you companies to push this garbage to our children. The prison complex, the destruction of family, us killing one another is a direct result. It's, it's, it's a direct result of the music and the portrayal that they've been pushing through the media. The media, I believe, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that's right, is the tongue of the devil. It can be utilized as the tongue of the devil. It can be used for good, but they're not using it for good. And they can no longer become or be the moral compass for us anymore to determine what we should get enraged about. We get enraged based on, we, we, we have situational outrage depending on what the news tell us to get outraged about while our, our community is getting destroyed and our people are being replaced. Wake up, folks. They're replacing you. Last call. I'm sorry I couldn't take all of the calls. I have to go. And uh, I'll be, but I'll be ready this Friday. I'll tell you that. I'll be ready this Friday for uh, Patreon. I thank you all for your support. Uh, Samuel has a comment. Hey, Shalom, man. How you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. I just wanted to make a, a quick comment Yeah. Um, concerning the uh, whole Passport Bro movement. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say I find it interesting how, like, back in 2008, 2009, how, you know, you and the elders were on the street telling uh, brothers and sisters to get their passport. And, you know, and seeing some of the comments on the videos, if YouTube hasn't taken them down, they would say, like, well, you know, we're not getting our passports, we're not fleeing. Um, and at one point in time, they even labeled the church like the Flea Doctrine Church. <laughs> and it's, it, <laughs> it's interesting because the same things that you all were prophesying about now, well, excuse me, back then about the moral decay of America is now affecting, you know, the women, you know, for a majority of them in America, making them what they would call delusional now. And okay. as a result of that, that has forced people to get passports in droves. And it's like, and it really proves the Bible correct because it teaches that outside of the most highest truth, the next most powerful thing in the earth is a woman. So I thought that was interesting how the passport movement has, you know, correlated that with the scriptures and everything. And I just wanted to call in to make a comment on that. And yes, just, I mean, excuse me, brother. Yes, they try to put a negative connotation or they had the flea doctrine. It'll flee doctrine. The Bible says, come out of my people. There's no doctrine. See, but they want to put a negative connotation on it. But all in all, what it comes down to, okay, is that all the people say that it was flea doctrine, they end up following us and going out into other areas to try to set up churches, proselytizing in the areas that we've already traveled to. So that's hypocrisy. Correct. When we were traveling and, and going throughout the whole earth setting up churches, they were making it negative in America because it, they weren't doing it. And the only thing I was saying right. was, it's not me that's saying do it. Do, the Most High said, said go out and do it. And now they're doing it too. And, to, and then I hear a lot of these other groups saying, and maybe 
they're saying it now. We may have to leave America sooner or later. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> it's, I, I'm curious. I'm like, okay, hey, as long, hey, okay. So, 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 no recant of all the demonization and throwing negative connotations on what we were saying, 2008 and 2009, when you were saying online amongst your members, we were crazy. But it's okay. Yep. As, hey, as long yeah, as they the, even have them like in high school. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I say as long as the outcome is the most high's will, that's all that matters. But go on. Yeah, yeah, because um, and I, I just want to share this, and then you know, and that'll be it for me. Um, one of my friends was telling me he saw a video online to where they have kids that were at a pep rally in high school chanting, "Get your passports." Now these are children; they haven't even graduated high school yet, haven't even gotten careers, and they're already talking about getting passports, leaving to go find other mates in other countries to you know deal with, as mm. you know, to build a family and everything. I'm like, that's. That's hey. crazy. Hey, hey, it's the most high prepping it up. Because after right. after this immigration and what the Democrats is about to do, and I say Democrats in particular, even though I'm not a Republican, is because why? It's it's the party our people have supported, propped up, and always held to. The liberals absolutely who are who are now in line to utterly decimate our people in the community. So get your passports, and uh, yes, sir. I'm going to be talking about this as we uh, come closer to uh, traveling. All right? That's all I can say on that. All right? With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the yes, most sir. high be with you. Thank you, Elder Lawyer. I didn't mean to keep you up all night. I thought we were going to have an early one, but I'm going to go come early. I'm going to make sure we have an, uh, an earlier broadcast next week, Elder Lawyer. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shalom. Shalom. Have a good night, young man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. You do the same. All right. With that, that concludes our broadcast for this evening. I apologize for all those who didn't get an opportunity to chime in. But on uh, this Thank coming... Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. This Goodbye. Com this coming Friday, I'll take calls for those we've missed here. And we'll go into our Patreon update. And last but not least... Let me end this broadcast with the fact that the blame is equally on either side. And it's time for us to come together as the children of the Almighty. Two wrongs. Let's talk for a minute
There's two wrongs. We have to come together. Shalom.